Hi. It's Skycat Live. How you doing? Woo! It's um 8:26 p.m. on Monday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, 2024. It is 8:30 in the evening. And uh this is Skycat Live. What's up guys? How you doing? And uh she'll go big face here. I'm sorry I forgot about that part of it. Deactivate. There we go. Hello. So, uh, today I will be playing the same games I've been playing the last couple of days, which is um, uh, FFXI Horizon EVE Online and Horizon Zero Dawn. Tomorrow we have another game um, entering the, uh, the, uh, the rotation again, which is good. New World is getting its Slayer script update and Season 5 release tomorrow. And uh, I am looking forward to that because anything that improves the performance of New World is a major incentive for me to come back and play it. I still think it's a good game. I, I really do. So uh, New World will be entering my rotation. I have kept it out of my rotation for the last like five weeks while I wait for them to fuck around on this season and figure out what they're doing on the Slayer script. Been five weeks since, or longer than that, like probably like two months since I played New World or something. That's not like me. I, I do actually do play a lot of New World. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, return to that uh i uh, uh, gotta go uh, verify that i am uh, publishing and stuff i'm going to switch it off of big screen here and go back to small screen and we're going to get about the business of playing video games here <laughs> uh public da -da -da -da, eve online uh, for one streaming public gaming da -da 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 -da. Stream language is in English. Sorry, guys, just got a few things as a solo streamer with no producer or help or anything like that. It takes a little bit to do it all by myself, so I just kind of patiently try to get through it. And uh, here we are. Save, and we are live and on YouTube. Okay, just checking. Okay, and then Twitch, uh, all systems are go. And then finally, yes, uh, there we are, there we are. Okay, we're going to play some games now. Now, I had all of these games launched, but I don't, I don't, I don't anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, uh, or I guess I just got the launchers open is what I did. There we go. Okay, so here is FFXI. Here is uh, EVE Online will be launching here any second. Yep, there, there's those. I don't really seem to have... Uh, oh, right, I made some sound changes, so that's got to fix. There we go. Something's happening with my audio settings. Okay, we're good on that. Yeah, you you got sound running, so we'll, we'll, we'll put you... Right about there, I think. We'll sit right about there. Yeah. And most of the time... Skill training completed. Yeah, mo most of the time I could actually probably sit here, I think. Like, uh, when I'm talking normally, I want my voice to be just at the limit. Yeah, see, that's weird. Like, check, 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 check. Fuck! Right? Yeah, and that's... I, yeah, that's about right. That's, like, right where I want it to be. Okay, so... Uh, da -da -da, just da -da. <laughs> it's The first thing I do is yell, Fuck! <laughs> For a mic test. I'm like, Fuck! Because <laughs> like, I know that's what it's going to be. If I'm cussing all loud, I need to be able to, like, you know... Oh, stupid dead tiger. Dying of old age the second I get in. Okay, oh, my F keys are not working. There we are. I'm going to get on this demon... And ah, oh, it will sit down. Ugh, I need that thing out of my way so I can see my health bar and, and my TP. There we go. Okay, so we go sit down over here. I don't really like the pet bar. I don't think I need it. I think it's just a complication. It constantly clutters my screen. I mean, I use it and I like it, and it's cool because even even if you run away from the mob, it still tracks what the health bar of the target is, and I do like that. Uh. Yep, yeah, so, okay, there's that. Now we're on Eve. Uh, I'm just going to ch check the status of my boosters. I'm out. So that'll be the first thing that we worry about. But I don't think I have any boosters currently on me. I don't think I brought any back. Yeah, I didn't. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, that's okay. We're going to check the process of my booster skills. Durr, 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 durr. Uh, we are looking for... Oh. Uh, yeah, we doing okay here? Yeah, yeah, we do okay. Oh, I don't have Signet. 
Son of a bitch. Well, I have a lot of conquest points. I guess I'll use them on a on a on a teleport scroll. That's all right. I suppose. Uh, so today was a half day, and I'm terribly sorry, guys. Um, I did take half day off here today. It will only be like probably a six to eight hour session in, uh, until the morning, maybe ten at the most, kind of thing. Because uh, I want to be bed in bed by six in the morning, and it's about eight o'clock now. So we'll do yeah, we'll do about eight or ten hours and stuff. But it won't be a fourteen hour session today. I took it. Uh, oh God, I hate that sound. That sound is so annoying. Why did you mar your beautiful game with it? Fucking it's dumb. Anyways, uh, so uh. Okay, so, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, not, that's not what I need. I need to check the status of my boosters. I have a Master in Arms for 13 more hours, yeah, and it really, really doesn't really make sense. Um, I'm not going to be going up mining just yet, so I'm going to bomb this character over. I'm sorry, I'm going to log it, and then I'm going to uh, get in an Ibis here. I should buy a shuttle. I should buy a council shuttle when I'm in um, Amar. And we'll send her to Amar. It's like running her to, to the drug. We're, we're sending her to the dope house to buy some dope, you know. And she's going to come back with boosters. And that's all right. You know, it's good. So, undock. Uh, what a good thing, but it just gives me that that vo that uh, vi Vio dance with her trail makeup on. Looks so much like Shadzia Dax, like they are sisters. Trail makeup on? What are we talking about? Jadzia Dax. Anyway. So we are going to Mar, mm -hmm. and that'll be fun. Buy boosters. That's always fun. Secondary is out now. Don't need to send both of them. Ah, we'll you know, technically I could, I could do a hauling run right now, but I don't think I have enough. I'd like to get it up around five hundred million before I worry. Oh, I want Signet, and I suppose it's possible that Bastok owns. Oh, hey, we do. We own Valdunia. Nice. Well, then I'll just run back. It's about the same thing. Well, no, I could really die doing that. I'd best go drop off some loot and, you know, loot my D-Box and do a, do a town run. Okay, so there is Eve and FFXI running. Let's get the last one going, which is Horizon, or I'm sorry, yeah, Horizon Forbidden West, which is going to come up. Where are you, damn it? Where is my Steam? There it is. I have to blow my nose. I'm going to go get a paper towel real quick. Approaching right Stargate. Back. Autopilot jumping. <sighs> Warping to Stargate. Drive oh, active. I suppose I'll just go to the to the Mog House. Uh, so here we go. We're going to load Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West. And then I'm, I want to, I wish to listen to the news. Um, so Philip DeFranco is coming up now. Here is wow. Guess who got caught on video? Billie Eilish versus Taylor, Taylor Swift, Oklahoma's secret Chinese mob, etc. And we have liked to sub to his channel, and we're going to fire this up. We're going to drag over, and we're going to fire up. Fire up. Ooh, real solid frame rate. That's good. Jump into it. Starting with, Texas police are on a manhunt right now for Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rasheed Rice. And this Why? in connection to a dramatic hit and run that was caught on video hit Saturday. And with run. dash cam video initially showing nothing out of the ordinary on this expressway in North Dallas. Walk, walk it. In North what? Dallas. Until North, long North Dallas. Okay, why North Dallas? Now, why would a football guy run from the law? You could just fucking buy a lawyer. I mean, it would it would take O.J. Simpson and a bloody glove to get you in jail. Just fucking put put some. I mean, rich people don't go to jail. You fucking idiot. Hire a lawyer. Or tell them to tell a lie and just have them NDA or to go get an NDA with the victim or some shit. I mean, seriously, you're so stupid. The victim, if you if you show up at their house, and you're like, look, I'm not interested in losing my career, and this was obviously a really bad accident. 
in it. I'm terribly sorry. I don't wish to lose my career, so I'm here to offer you $100 million to make this go away. And I don't do, I don't say that to say that your your family's life wasn't worth more or any of that stuff or, or any of that. I'm just trying not to ruin two lives. And that's how you do it. Honesty will get you a lot further than running from the fucking cops, you stupid richer. All of a sudden, a Corvette and a Lamborghini shoot down the far left lane. Stupid ass richer. Look at you fucking fuck around with a Lambo on Dallas trying to kill somebody. With the Lamborghini losing control, veering into the shoulder, and then crashing into several other cars in a median wall along with the Corvette. He was drunk, then, and he doesn't want them to prove it. After the dust settles, you see the occupants of both those sports cars running away. You were drunk in a Lambo, and you're an NFL star. You're probably on cocaine and drunk on a, and drunk in a Lambo. And you're an NFL star. What the fuck? You, this is the image that you want to sell to the kids, huh? NFL player are all criminals jesus fucking christ man fail ass piece of shit i don't care if you play football i don't give a fuck about that away without even stopping to check whether anyone was yeah, hurt. that now, was a terrible are... terrible lamborghini car crash that you inflicted upon the world and then ran what the fuck i hope they torch you still investigating exactly who fled the scene but they suspect okay, that the corvette's pilot. driver was 23 year old rasheed rice the same guy that was a key player in the chief super bowl win most of the most receiving touchdowns on the team because he's, M he's mia now he's gonna run with all that well, money the fact that he was allegedly involved in a hit and run not only massive for its own reason but also because of the impacts this may have for the nfl in general as well as the super bowl yep. champion so the good thing here or let's call it a silver lining is that according to police luckily no one suffered more than minor injuries oh crash. never mind nobody nobody died Died? wronged or traumatized oh yeah example, i mean mom who was driving one of the vehicles telling dallas morning news that her four-year-old son was left shaking and crying yeah yeah uh, never mind if he didn't kill anybody i think it's funny it's, it's funny because the cost of lives is where we draw the line but before that we'll fuck around with you and we'll laugh at it and we'll be like yeah as long as nobody fucking died you fucking asshole he shouldn't have shouldn't have hit and ran you should just fucking like pay, like fessed up and be like sorry guys kind of fucked up in a lambo i'm an idiot nfl star it's kind of what you expect out of dirty stupid richers you know what i'm saying like you know it's kind of kind of what rich people do remember when Lindsay lohan fucking got her dui and shit this is what dirty richers do you know so like yeah just fucking pay your way out of the problem don't go hit and run and disappear what's that gonna do to your career they're never gonna let you play ball again you stupid fucking richer Approaching rich people are so fucking stupid they're they're goddamn the lowest iq pieces of shit on the fucking planet i swear to god most of the world's problems stem from their stupidity i really mean this poverty hunger idiocy lambo car crashes with no like no no discernible fucking like perpetrator or whatever all that stupid fucking shit like what's his name michael vick fighting fighting dogs and all that stupid shit rich okay, people are so jumping. fucking stupid and really, i do not look up up to them at all i think i view them as one big goddamn liability to society essentially i know you guys worship them all or whatever the fuck and i don't give a fuck i might be one one day i, I doubt it but i mean like hey you never know so it's like fucking like an, an, i'm shooting for that fucking star too it's not because i call it being rich quite the opposite i really don't relish being a fucking richer i really don't relish being fucking stupid like you making really bad decisions letting your money cover you like some kind of goddamn money shield out of a fallout card or something you know like i've got rich people shield uh my powers i have lots and lots of money <laughs> get to my belly you know and adding that her car is now undrivable and saying it's a fact and now and you wrecked someone's car who's gonna pay for that and it's not like i really give a fuck about a hit and run if nobody died but i mean like usually if you're a fucking nfl star you send some lawyer to get an nda you fucking idiot running of running from the cops i never understood that with oj simpson or any of that stupid shit i'm gonna hit you with some coolio wisdom from the motherfucking ghetto that i've lived by very well all of my life and i've, I've never been full-blown convicted of a felony and one of the reasons that i didn't right one of the big big fucking reasons i got a rap sheet 28 miles long you know what i'm saying it's good i mean 28 charges long it's like i got a rap sheet you know what i'm saying like it, it's long i can show it to you it's fucking big and how i stayed out of jail right how, how i stayed out of jail is this understanding that that like the helicopter lights are as bright as the sun you don't run from them you don't fuck with them several times in my life i've had 25 police officers leveling guns at my head and threatening to fire you know at the end of the high, high speed chase and, and this shit uh you know and i'm just saying like the helicopter lights uh, how and they and this is coolio this is a song that coolio had on his on his album uh, gangster paradise right where he was like yeah, how in the hell do you think you can run when the hell... 911, here they come, come. 
Yeah. Right? Like, like, Not like, uh, I love the, I'll, I'll hit you with the, la the last bit of the rap lyrics to this fucking song. It was like, Julio, helicopter, uh, bright as the sun, uh, bright as the sun, right? Bright as the sun lyrics, right? How in the hell do you think you can run, right? It's, it's, it's I loved this song. I love this song. It was, it really, uh, it really fucking reached me, this song. It got to me, and I did stay out of jail because of it. He was like, uh, nine I'm in his waist, that's a new game, Locas. If you, oh, I'm sorry, it's like lockdown since the 80s situation, number three. Um, a blank word is released from the penitentiary. Fools better recognize and visualize. Don't be surprised, you better realize. They got a plan for your ass, a cage for the mask. So if you're rolling dirty, you, then you got to have a stash. Spot in your hoopty, and you know the whoopty whoopty. When the whoopty whoopty what wafty is done onto you see he don't know the new game because the new game ain't true game well he better catch or quit because the old game is running nine in his waist that's the new game low because if you ain't hated heated then you might get smoked he was walking down the street minding his business just happy to be free and what do we see from the corner of his house here come one time so off he dashed like they set fire to his ass because if you get caught it's strike number three and this might be his last day on the street i bet next time you'll listen when i tell you son that the helicopter lights as bright as the sun right <clears throat> now the chase is on and here go the song how in the hell do you think you can run when the helicopter lights as bright as the sun you can't run from five stars in grand theft auto no in real life or in the game you can't run from five stars don't be aggroing the fucking feds don't be running from them don't be running from the fucking cops i don't support it and i was a criminal who, who venerated criminal shit most of my life i've been a kingpin and shit and i do not you i do not support you fucking with johnny law those guys are there i mean you don't run from them you don't fuck with them i don't support it you go to jail if you if you don't fucked up you take it like a man real gangsta ass motherfuckers don't run fast you understand we don't run from our fucking problems i've never i've never needed to I, I fessed up took it every single time when they understand you're not there to fuck them around or teach the kids how to be shitheads and you done made a mistake and you're a fucking drug addict or whatever the fuck you're not there to fuck with them you go hands in the air second they say it you're up in the air and you're like yes sir what do you need what would you like sir and i hate to say it i'm not saying be a fucking sheep I'm saying you can't run. The, hel the helicopter lights are as bright as the sun. Trying to run from five stars was a Grand Theft Auto fantasy. You can't do it. You cannot do it. This kid, this guy absolutely did do it. You want to know why? He has the money to cold, ca cold case his trail. He's got lawyers working to NDA shit now. And, you know, he's got people and money on his side. If you're in the ghetto and you are, you are a drug dealer and you are about to run from the goddamn pigs, understand that doesn't go well 99.9999999 times out of 10 you know or whatever 100 whatever like 99.9999999 times out of 100 like that doesn't work it doesn't work you did the helicopter lights as bright as the sun they hate you because they're just there trying to protect your grandma that's literally how i view fucking pigs i'm sorry they're fucking assholes and we have the i can't breathe there fuck them straight up fuck their police brutality fuck the pigs i want them to have a year of training why does a barber have more training than a fucking worthless pig right now i don't know but they're worthless to me right but you know i'm, I'm gonna say it don't be fucking with them they're there they're not there to to protect your grandma they're just there to punish your grandma if she fucks up you know you understand they're not there to protect your grandma it's nice yeah. when they when they're able to you know it's nice when they do that but you'd be surprised how much we need that even your grandma will fuck over the fucking world if we give her enough slack it's that it's that's the way the world works so so, so these people they're there trying to help us in our fucking community i'm not pro police in any way or fucking form i've hunted a police officer before i fucking hate the pigs you understand but it's a necessary fucking evil don't be fucking with them on sundays don't be shooting up fucking funerals or shit when people's grandmothers are around don't be shooting fucking pistols at each other in fucking inner city fucking ghettos on home soil we're not the fucking enemy we're your fucking family and your fellow americans and your fucking fellow community shit stop stop shooting up the inner cities you stupid pieces of shit i don't care what your goddamn gang fucking problems are i don't care how much you hate each other stop shooting up the inner cities like chirac stop doing that stupid shit stop fucking with police police and stop running from them like the helicopter lights as bright as the sun and, and if you make the their job hard like akon say if you, you know you can you've been contributing to make their job hard of course they're gonna fucking eric garner the crush your neck to death they you we've, we've been making their goddamn job hard i'm not saying stop what you're doing or or to venerate police or any of that stupid fascist fascist you know dick wolf bullshit from law and order any of that i'm talking about these people are trying to keep your community alive and thriving and strong and you fucking disappear on an nfl paycheck trying to fucking nda 
they disappear on these people and shit that just makes their job harder that's all you did you made your community more like like worse for the for for you know for the effort no sympathy shown to i feel this way about like will smith bitch smacking chris rock don't be fucking around and assaulting people in public like that i don't care what your fucking reason is don't be fucking getting assault don't be assaulting people in fucking public on camera in front of me base piece of shit base piece of shit will smith i don't give a fuck about chris rock your wife or whatever little bitch tiff that you got into don't be assaulting people in fucking public in my community i don't give a fuck who you are or why uh, you are never justified in doing that you want to know why i'm so angry about that it's because i caught goddamn seven assault charges and i don't think it's fucking funny they were false assault charges i went through the worst pain i've ever gone and my my fucking life short of being the shit beaten out of me by a fucking psychopath and shit who i sent to jail for this and like understand i do not want you fucking around with these people in my community it's not okay with me we burn your fucking fuck. worthless richer ass we'll, we, we burn you you understand even have the don't be fucking around stuff. with the do this stupid ass shit lambo crashes and running from the fucking scene like it's gonna i mean it's gonna destroy your career take that sh take take your shit like a fucking man don't be running over kids and fleeing from the helicopters and shit like that don't be fl don't be running from the kid don't be running from the police running over kids and shit like that don't be fucking acting like that in my fucking community we've got enough problems as it is you know observe the fucking speed law you fucking gassed up jokers fucking press w pieces of shit stop and check to make sure someone's okay someone's alive you know well now the latest update we have as of recording this video is that cbs is reporting that rice clowns has got legal counsel following saturday's okay. incident but for now we're gonna have to wait to see what kind of impact this has on his life and or career and then is there really anything as fun as pitting two immensely successful women against each other i mean i have to imagine not because we keep seeing it happen over and yep. over with the most recent example of this drama being billy eilish and taylor swift billy right? the most win. recent situation began with an interview Billy's with younger. Billboard about sustainability and how it can be prioritized in the music industry. They're speaking to Billboard alongside her mom and discussing what their efforts have looked like and what progress has been made in the industry overall since Billy's career started. But what ended up getting the most attention was Billy calling out the practice of releasing different vinyl variants, right? Different vinyls yep. for the same exact album. Yup, yup. What the fuck is that? Track. What is that? So you just get to jack the fucking, you just get to jack the fucking artist on the other copies of the I album? You want to fuck that. Billie Eilish? I want to fuck Billie Eilish too now that she's, you know, old enough but i mean like fucking like jesus fucking christ dude like you you're literally doing it you're literally fucking doing it i would go to a dance or you know someplace she was at and trying to hit on her or something you're trying to literally fuck her in the ass i hate the record labels i hate them goddamn fucking pieces of shit ruining the industry for our people okay, encouraging things. There's, I mean, like, okay, our whole life, our whole life, I had a band. I, I wouldn't say it was a successful band in terms of money, but it was successful in how long it lasted. It was eight years, and we played, like, goddamn 300 gigs or something like that. I had a great high school band. Fucking loved every second of it. Got no regrets, nothing. And I still remember every song, every word. I remember every show. I remember all that stuff. I remember all of it, right? But I will say this. There was no way we were ever, 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 ever. And I, I felt like we could have signed. I felt like we, were, like we weren't good, like, nirvana but we were trying to be good like nirvana i was trying to sing like kurt cobain i was trying to fucking like take what like like take the radios by storm the way they did it with nevermind you know and i was i wrote a whole bunch of earworms in a row on, on an entire album that took me eight like I mean, it was like five six years to write my my guitarist and i it took us like five six years to write that album is it, it was all earworms all anthems all 16 songs they all play they all played like grunge hits you know like grunge hits on the radio and shit and that was and we, we we did this on purpose but we knew we knew we were never gonna take a dollar or give a dollar to a fucking recording studio never ever ever we, we, we would go and win battle the bands to go and get to be able to go and record albums because we knew that there was no way we were ever gonna deal with a fucking recording label and props to billy for even uh, like doing it i'm surprised she's on a label if with that much success you gotta get your own label girl like trent reznor look at what trent reznor did he made nothing records and he signed uh marilyn manson and i think it was like bauhaus and a couple of other sort of industrial bands i forget they're not bauhaus but uh, uh what's the other one the the, uh, the older one i can't remember this uh skinny puppy right i think he signed skinny puppy and uh jesus built my hot rod who was that i forget that band too they were, they were really fucking good jesus built my hot rod you can google it. i forget the name of that band i think they were on nothing records for a while i'm, I'm fairly sure 
If you're as good as Trent Reznor is, the way that Billie Eilish is as good as Billie Eilish is, you get the fuck off that fucking label right the fuck away, because labels are only there to fuck you in the ass. That's their only job. They're they're, they're there to to do 15% of your work. They book shows for you. They're they're needed. They're good. I'm not saying that that agents aren't needed or any of that stuff. I'm not. I'm just saying they do 15% of the goddamn work. The the, the, the heavy lifting is the artistic process, which, which burns these artists. You can see what it's done to her, you know? It burns them. It just burns them. The creative process, it just like burns them alive. They sit there and, and they, they, they make beautiful art as hard as they can for, for several years while they, while, they, while they go hard and they're hot in the scene and they have buzz like she did and shit. And this burns them out. I know because it happened to me. It like burns you out. When you go for 10 years with no break and you just go hard the entire fucking time, it burns you the fuck out. It really does. So like, you know, I get it. But I mean, like she should have never signed. Her, her, she and her brother never should have signed to a label in the first fucking place. And beyond Taylor's like fourth album she shouldn't have been with whoever she's with she's probably with bgm or one of them i forget the names of all the stupid ass labels but interscope i'd have if i had if i had to guess she's probably interscope she shouldn't be interscope she should have made her own fucking record label it's simple as day if the punk if the punk bands can do it why can't taylor swift she's got money you know she can hire all kinds of people to build a label for her that's i mean it's ridiculous that she should pay someone else when you're this goddamn like when you're this much this much of a shooting star you're just a comment and the whole world like like tracks your fashion and follows you around and loves you and dies for you and all the little girlies cream their panties when you show up on stage and all that shit whether you're man or woman it doesn't matter that's that love that fervor and you must you must you must capitalize on the money as soon as you can the first thing that you should be doing is buying your own label i don't i'm not talking I'd like seriously you shouldn't buy a car you shouldn't buy a fucking mansion if you're hot and you got a, you got a sudden platinum album like both of these artists got you know what i'm saying like her first album was platinum you know what i'm saying went platinum right off the bat and you know you're just pure sugar to the whole human race they just want to eat you up like chocolate or something like that right trust me you don't buy a car you don't buy a mansion you don't bail your mom out and send her to the hills or any of that stupid shit that all the artists do the first thing you do is you buy like a hundred million dollar you know you know i'm you either buy or you create like a 50 to a hundred million dollar record label that you know is only going to ever have your best friends on it. So they don't fuck you over the, the, the bands will fuck the, the label as much as the label will fuck the bands, you know? So you gotta, you know, you gotta be careful about drug addict artists and all this other stuff. So I would only ever sign like three to five bands on my label. Exactly. Like Trent Reznor, man was a goddamn genius. The whole, there's a reason that the, the industrial crowd looked up to him as like the God of the scene. And he still is. There's no, nobody has even remotely come in to challenge him except for tool that was it and, and maynard is the other god in the scene maynard is more of a god in the scene now than than, than trent, Re- trent Reznor was but i'm fairly sure like i, I think and i think tool sat around on on um on on on, a, on, on i think uh interscope if i recall but like i don't but i don't know why when you have that much love and fervor you could hide people come to you and and I, I swear to god these artists say no because they're like oh they're just trying to get more money from me or something like that right everyone everyone's trying to get money from you you're rich that is true but sooner or later somebody shows up and it's like hey man we want to build we want you to build a label so that you can not fuck yourself as opposed to being fucked by a label it's not like you make much money with your own label you really don't it's hard to hard to do all the work by yourself and they fa- they fight you the whole way that's what happened to nothing records and all this but it doesn't matter you still don't fucking pay some fucking people that you don't know when you're brand new famous you just don't do that it's fucking stupid so let's see what let's see what they have to say about it to collect them with her saying we live in this day and age where for some reason i want to hear what she, she, she all- said something about longevity and how impossible it is for for a record uh like like a like it, it used to be art, artists like woody guthrie or bob dylan would release like 30 fucking albums over their lifetime and every single one was good and they really thought out the lyrics on every single one and they didn't do any filler or bullshit or radio filler or any of that other stuff and, and most artists until about the 70s were famous for making between five and 30 albums now we're really surprised when they make five because it's so stressful for them. I'm, I'd be surprised if Billy's got more than five in her. Well, I'm sure she does, but I'm saying she can't retire to some jazz singers 
life, you know, in the in the lounge scene, you know, I mean, she can, but it's but it doesn't pay. It doesn't really pay uh, the money that it does when you're famous. It actually costs you money to, to just keep touring clubs and, and, and keeping your name hot and all that. And the longevity in the scene for these artists is goddamn. It's like it's it's like a tragedy. It's like a national tra- like international tragedy. Like we can't keep these artists on top. We can't get them on a on a on a on a on a, on a hamster wheel churning out churning out albums that change our lives like the Beatles did. Right? We can't get them on a hamster wheel like that because the, the the records are so the record companies are so goddamn corrupt that they have their hands in their pockets from day one. And so my only my only said I don't know how to tell you how to be Billie Eilish or Taylor Swift, and I've not been those women, and I've, I'll never be as famous as them. I didn't spend a whole lifetime or whatever. I mean, t- I mean maybe I could actually reach it, but I would need help. And, you know, uh, and these women have help, but I'm just saying like, it, it, it's, su- it sucks that the record labels are coming after them like sharks the whole entire time. And she's right about the longevity thing. It's one of the reasons why I never really wanted to be a paid artist is because yeah, the, the fastest way to essentially salary cap yourself is becoming famous because then immediately you need agents, you know, lawyers, drug dealers, drug keeper awayers, uh, rehab, all this other stupid shit. Like the cost of doing the business as celebrity is so high. It's so high. And so my first advice is the one yoke that you you absolutely will not shed. You might get rid of the drug addiction. You might be famous for 50 years. Michael Jackson did it. it, it you know, it's, it's possible. It's very rare, like Prince or, or you know, David Bowie or, or whatever, like, like, like Taylor Swift or whatever. But I mean, like it's, it happens. And one of the things about longevity is, 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 like the record label, how they're pushing your album, how they're selling it, how many copies they make, the vinyl variations, all that shit. And the longevity on top of it is crazy. And they'll do stuff like what they did to uh, when they thought when they didn't like the day when the, when the record labels didn't like the dead Kennedys, uh, poor Jello Biafra, the lead singer of the punk band, the dead Kennedys and stuff. They had his band recut the albums and they had the masters to his voice. They owned the masters to the voice because they own the masters, right? And so they just recut the albums over again without his permission. And they didn't pay him a fucking cent. And don't, you don't, don't believe me? Go Google it. Go Google what, what Interscope did to, to the dead Kennedys because they don't like people who, who speak out against the establishment. They're, they're agents and, and bullshit establishment people. They're, that's who they are. So they, they didn't like the dead Kennedys. They, don't, they didn't like how popular they were. They, did, they were scared that a punk band might get famous because then we might actually have like, you know, Holiday in Cambodia going live, which is what happened to Holiday in Cambodia started playing on a Nabisco commercial. And that was that that was a hemorrhoid for that band. I feel I feel so bad for them they i mean they sold the song but it, i mean holiday in cambodia is a really good song you know it's really a, a, a catchy song it's like a surfing it's like a surfer song it's very good uh, uh melodically and so what it so what did interscope i think it was interscope that did this to them they, they were on a, a cali southern pop label or something like that maybe it was sub records or something i forget what it was but their whole fucking label when they realized that the only value that the label looked at when with dead kennedys wasn't the people or the band or the music or the message it was entirely selling the product right so they just burned the lead singer cut him out of the fucking band he quit the band they recut all the albums with with his voice over a new cut of the music that they got the band to to do and the band sold out without his permission fucked him out of the band and he would come i saw him do it once i saw him come and cry on stage at the ogden theater he cried on stage i mean he was a gay man and he was a bit sensitive i don't blame him and stuff i love jello biafra whatever but he cried on stage in front of us in denver because he could tell that we understood some of us were in bands and we really hated this shit we hated clear channel you know and we understood what they did to him that he, he was this he was the most famous punk singer of all time and they fucked him they took the albums they recut them with his voice that they owned and they resold it all without his permission and that's so if you buy a dead kennedy's album that's the records copy of dead kennedy's album that's not dead kennedy's that i mean it is dead kennedy's but it's the record label literally just cut him out they just cut they just cut him out of the process they didn't like him they didn't like the message so they were they were just like fuck you we don't like that you left the band with it's his business he's the singer he can do that if he wants you know and then it fucks them yeah but i mean like they looked at it like a contractual violation and they 
fucked his ass. They fucked him. They cut the band out. They ruined his lifelong uh, friendships with his band. They cut him out of the fucking scene. They cut him. They wouldn't. They wouldn't book him any shows anymore. He had to go live live on his own auspices again at that point. They just blackballed him, you know. And they sold his albums without his permission. This is what they'll do to you. This is what those fucking shitty labels actually do. Don't trust them. And as soon, as, I don't understand. I really don't understand seeing like a new rapper like Pop. <coughs> Excuse me. I really don't understand seeing like a new rapper like Pop Smoke or, or somebody like being all done up or like two chains being done up in like fucking gold and shit and wearing all that Prada and that stupid ass shit. You want to know what I want to see? in a video with two chains i want to see him walking out with a purchase contract on a building and inside the building is a new record label i could give two i want fuck the g ride i don't need 50 g rides you know what i'm saying i want the machines that are making them and, and, a, and a smart good artist that i really would want to support is is going to be coming out in a crappy pair of pants and a crappy shirt that he bought from like you know from from the gap not not some prada shit or some shit right and he's walking out with a purchase contract on a fucking record label that's what i want to see from the artist not this piece of shit bougie spend gold on two chains fucking cocksuckery that these fucking richer idiots are up to you know what i'm saying like fucking richers and i know it sounds like some kind of epithet because it is it's it's like they're like like they're they're in it for the fucking money and the first thing they do is start giving the label 85 percent of their money pretty much 85 percent look at what happened to elvis i mean come on now so so you want to know what i want to see when out when elvis cuts his like third platinum album and we real and we re, 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 you know we realize that not only is he going to be famous for the rest of our lives but his label is going to eat like high off the hog or or the uh the colonel's going to eat high off the hog for the rest of his life or whatever the first thing elvis should have done first thing beatles should and beatles did beatles did this the beatles made apple records and they cut under their own fucking their, their own their, their own thing because the the minute that they were high in the 60s the record label just immediately started trying to take advantage of them so they just bombed out after beatles for sale or something like that and they just made their own their own out their own record label and not only was it a record label apple records was a clothing i mean they did this in 1963 it was like a like a clo a cloak uh, like a clothing or some year i don't know i don't know if that's the right year but they uh they they made apple records and and apple records eventually became just apple and apple was just this thing about selling clothes in the boutique shops in london which was a big part of the music scene in the 60s and 70s those boutique shops were the women and the beatles knew this so they, they 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 opened their own boutique shop to sell Beatles stuff instead of instead of selling to the to the vendors and getting fucked they just opened their own store and started, started selling their own Beatle merch which is smart and then they they cut out the label immediately off their like third album or something like that and that's how we got the Beatles had they stayed on a label we wouldn't have had the last five albums that they did you know and, and, and John probably would have been killed way earlier and all this stuff I mean I'm sorry but like that's really how I feel the labels aren't good so like the first thing you should, you should do I don't want to see you pulling up in a fucking Lambo bragging about two chains or any of that stupid inane bougie fucking you know I, I love like Nicki Minaj but I do not like what she did to the fucking scene at all I really don't like how she monetized the scene really bad and it takes it takes a shrewd businesswoman to do that i'm not trying to be a hater i like Nicki minaj but i don't like how she 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 continues to push the goddamn bougie shit i want to see them coming out with a piece of paper saying they bought a record label and a pair of pants from the gap you know that would impress me a lot more and i'd be like damn that motherfucking balling he balling way more than drake way way more than drake drake's got all those billions of dollars or whatever fuck drake i don't give a fuck about goddamn money or get what the fuck does a, a singer need all that money for mics you know what the fuck they have always had this problem what the fuck does a singer need all that money for straight up for mics pas yeah a little bit yeah they should make more money than most people but they shouldn't make that much money like a billion dollars motherfucker yeah I, that does not impress me and all the time you hear them saying i would give it away if i could you know and all this stupid ass shit like i didn't really want it i didn't really want this much of it i just i can't turn it off it's like a faucet now and uh, many people rely on me and all this shit yeah yeah sure but see instead of showing up like you know like in in a fucking you know a, a ten thousand dollar suit and thirty thousand dollar snakeskin shoes and fucking two gold chains and all that stupid fucking bougie against reality no ghetto is actually like this fucking reality or whatever they this like somebody threw a million dollars into the monkey cage at the zoo or something like that and i'm not talking about some kind of racial thing i'm talking about poor people having that kind of money talking about being that bougie but, ha but having your clientele be primarily people from the from the lower and middle class 
class right is really fucking weird all that bragging and stupid shit that you fucking shitty shitty richers do you know i don't care what your race is i'm talking about your fucking money i really could give a fuck about your race i'm talking about money you take that money and you buy two gold chains instead of a fucking record label i don't respect you fans to collect them with her saying we live in this day and age where for some reason it's very important to some artists to make all sorts of different vinyl and packaging which ups yep. the sales and ups the yep. number yep. and then going on to say i can't even express to you how wasteful it is i find yep. it really frustrating as somebody who yep. really goes out of my way to be sustainable to be like the sustainable best that I can and yep. try to involve everybody vinyl in my sucks team and being sustainable. there's a and reason the biggest artist in the world there's a reason that vinyl and cds died in like by 94 it's not a good tech hard drives are a good tech vinyl is not a good tech and i'm sure it was a big piece of our lives lives and i love vinyl and my my best friend he's got like thirty thousand records and i'm not a hater i'm just saying it wasn't a sustainable fucking business model it's what we needed uh, to it's what we needed to get music through the 60s and 70s and 80s until a much better format came along the cassette tape and then a much better ca format came along the cd player and then finally the best format came along the mp3 slash hard drive player making fucking 40 different vinyl packs it's, it's cheaper to produce little tiny hard drives than it is to produce little pieces of plastic discs believe it or not that have little scored etched things on them and all this that's just as technical really but the hard drive is a lot easier to i mean we're really the whole thing is a machine stamp process anyways but i mean making vinyl is not cheap compared to making mp3 players making mp3 players is cheap making vinyl is not packages that have a different unique thing just to get you to keep buying more it's so wasteful yep. and it's irritating to me that we're still at a point where you care that much about your numbers and you care that much about making money right. and billy's mom adding that artists do this to chart and hit number one but this is actually a systemic problem oh she reminds me of my best friend's sister i love her so much i love her so much whatever i don't care what people think i don't care if she's not my generation or my music or whatever i love her so much and i love her mom and i love her brother and whatever she's one of my heroines or it should add pure heroin like lord restrictions because you can't just blame artists for playing pure heroin with, the, with an e you understand only pure heroin like lord she's a pure heroin i fucking love her she's pure adding i was watching the hunger games and it made me think about it because it's like we're all going to do it because it's the only way to play the game it's just kind of accentuating this already kind of yep. messed up way of this industry working yep. and so with that katniss by the end was like fuck the games fuck this stupid shit fuck being on the fucking like being on the auspices of someone else we're we're, we're only doing this because there's nothing else to do Her and comments and they immediately yeah. thought of taylor swift because she's sort of the queen of vinyl lately in fact in 2023 one out of every 15 vinyls sold was for taylor swift right? and she plays that variant game big time like with her upcoming yep. album the tortured poets department she already has several different versions of the vinyl each with a different bonus track packaging many of which were also only available for a limited time there were also many different limited versions of 1989 taylor's version including one with an extra song as well as multiple color variations of midnight and if you got them all you can actually make a clock out of the back covers and i mean really the, the list goes on and on but that said she of course is not the only person doing this but because her vinyl sales are so massive she has been the biggest example so that's why with this you had tons of people seeing billy's comments and calling taylor out and then swifties getting defensive which then led some people to know that billy herself has several variants for happier than ever so it's also worth noting there that at least some of those variants are made from recycled materials which is actually something billboard even noted in their article but then all of this drama got to such a big point billy came out to address it writing on instagram okay so it would be so awesome if people would stop putting words into my mouth I wasn't singling anyone out these are industry-wide systemic issues and when it comes to variants so many artists release them including me which i clearly state in the article the climate crisis is now and it's about all of us being part of the problem and trying to do better sheesh but with all that said whether you're a billy eilish stan you're a swifty you, you love both of them you don't care about either i'd love to know your thoughts on this and then you think of oklahoma one of the last things you probably think about is the chinese mob though i shouldn't assume maybe you do but if you do you know this story is not going to be that surprising to you because as it turns out oklahoma has actually become the epicenter of america's booming illegal marijuana market and organized mm -hmm. crime groups with ties to the chinese government are behind it. or at least that's what's been revealed by a joint investigation from propublica and frontier now with that said it's not like organized crime or the illicit drug trade is new to the united states but what is interesting here is how it's actually being driven in some ways by the increasing but uneven legalization of marijuana across the country so let's start there marijuana is now legal in one form or another in about 40 states but that also means you can encounter very different rules about how the stuff can be grown sold and consumed just by crossing state lines and the investigation found that this legal variability is part of what's created the conditions for a massive black market to thrive which brings us to oklahoma so even in states where weed is legal laws typically limit how much someone is allowed to grow. <coughs> colorado for example a marijuana cultivation facility can be licensed in different classes or tiers depending on the number of plants being grown or whether it's for medicinal use or retail. But when 
Oklahomans voted to legalize medical marijuana back in 2018. They approved a measure that didn't place any limits on the number of dispensaries oh. or growing operations. Come on, man. And they literally said, there shall be no limits. What was on that? A licensed grower. What was so that? Was with cheap land Come on, you fucked me. Help turn Oklahoma into a top destination for black market. Kill me midair after I draw. The man at the forefront of all this Come goes by on. the name Ma Chiang Chen. Where he came to the U.S. from China around 30 years ago. For a long time, he stayed pretty much off the radar. With his only documented encounters with the law being some tickets for speeding and reckless driving. And whether or not Chen was actually a law-abiding citizen all those years, he definitely wasn't in 2017. Because that's when he and his brother purchased a property in California and converted the barn into an illegal grow house. They're trying to take advantage of the state's recent legalization of marijuana. And as the article explains, they were far from the only ones trying to do something like this. Saying the cross-country move was part of a migration of criminal groups into the marijuana industry. Other destinations included Colorado and the Pacific Northwest. And going on to say the players who established clandestine grows included Mexican cartels, Cuban immigrant gangs, and longtime locals. But the Chinese crews were the biggest and best organized. And it's not like this went totally unnoticed. Chen, his brother, and several of their associates were busted in 2018 as part of a joint operation between states and the Please! federal government called Operation Lights Out. But other than that, they're Please use the goddamn glider! The use the glider! Why did you design this so badly? Federal agencies Come on, it should be a Chinese single button language, press. Why should I need to well hold it? Investigate the cases. But also, oh. former DEA officials told ProPublica and the Frontier that they've also just become less of a priority. And they say that's actually a mistake because the illegal marijuana industry isn't just about marijuana. It's also a way for criminal organizations to fund their other operations like money laundering and yep. migrant smuggling. Ray Donovan, the former chief of operations for the DEA, telling the investigation team, the challenge we're having is a lack of interest by federal prosecutors to charge illicit marijuana cases. And adding, they don't realize all the implications. Marijuana causes so much crime at the local level, gun violence in particular. The same groups Fuck. selling thousands of pounds of marijuana are also laundering millions of dollars of fentanyl money. And that leads us back to Oklahoma. See, after the medical marijuana measure passed there, it basically became the new California, at least for growing weed. Except it was actually even better. Because without any legal limits on quantities, growers could just grow tens of thousands of plants on a cheap bit of farmland, all while disguising it as a legal operation. That's what Ha Chiang Chen did. And he did this with an associate by the name of Yi Fei Lin. See, after receiving a probation sentence for his 2018 bus, Chen allegedly had Lin purchase a 10-acre property in Kingfisher County for $280,000. And then he paid cash to a local man by the name of Richard Ignacio to pose as the 75% owner of the business and obtain a license, circumventing a state law that marijuana businesses be majority owned by Oklahoma residents. And once again, they were far from the only ones. With a DEA agent from Denver by the name of Ray Padilla estimating that 90% of the illegal marijuana growers that had been in Colorado moved to Oklahoma. With that many new people coming in, Oklahoma quickly became a top producer of black market weed. And at this point, I feel like I need to throw some numbers at you so you kind of understand what I mean. Just try to convey the scale of this thing. Where we had officials estimating that the value of the state's illegal marijuana market is somewhere between $18 billion and $44 billion a year. That makes it the second biggest industry in the state, only trailing the oil and gas industry. And at its peak, authorities suspected that most of the 10,000 licensed marijuana growers in the state were actually trafficking on the black market. And 80% of the links that they found between illegal growers and foreign crime groups were with groups of Chinese origin. Like the DEA guy said, it is not just about the weed. 2023, for example, authorities uncovered a human trafficking operation linked to a brothel inside a northwest Oklahoma City home. With Mark Woodward, a spokesperson for the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics, saying, the clients coming and going from this brothel were administrators and managers of marijuana farms, specifically linking the rise of marijuana farms to increased prostitution as well as the use of drugs like ketamine. And on top of that, court cases and testimonies reveal things like illegal casinos cropping up and a general rise in robberies and violence. But the crime that made international headlines and in the investigation's words set off a flurry of investigative activity and political attention, that took place on Ha Chiang Chen's farm in 2022, a few months after a man by the name of Chen Wu moved to Oklahoma and invested in the operation. See, Wu had worked on the farm for a short time before arguing with his associates over money. But in November, he came back barging into the garage, shooting Chen in the knee and demanding what? that the others get the money that he believed that he was owed. And we're talking $300,000 worth. And by the end of the night, four people- Oh, look, I got six boosters. Oh yeah, look at that. Six boosters for cheap, cheaper, you know what I'm saying? Okay, well, six boosters for cheaper. Okay, that's a good deal. We got them for cheaper. That's good. Let's take them all back. And these are these are the, these are the personal use, right? Yeah, look, it's a really good deal. I got I got fucking I got six hundred million worth of boosters for, I don't know, like uh, what what is it? It's like 80, 80 million each or something. And they're, they're like ninety, I think. We'll look at masters real quick. But yeah, they're like eighty eight. And I got I got ten for seventy. I mean, maybe I should just resell these at eighty seven, nine eighty nine, and I would make a lot. Like I could, I could resell four of them and just start rolling these in, into endless money. I think because look at this margin: seventy two. These will sell to seventy two, eighty seven. Uh, I do want to bu put a buy order up, uh, like seventy three million. Yeah, and it's it's a pretty good, it's like a 10% profit or something. So every 10 of these I sell makes one of them free. 
And I mean, I don't know. I, yeah, I would do eight, seven, eight, uh, eight, eight, nine. Yeah, eight, eight, nine. Eight, seven, eight, eight, nine. And I got six of them for 70. I think it was like 74 or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, I believe I will begin. This is the only thing on the market beyond this thing, the large skill injector that I value. There's only two items on the market that I value, value at all besides ship hulls and, and ship ship equipment is uh cerebral accelerators oh and i value abyssal abyssal loot too because it'll be it'll be timeless in the end if they ever shut abyssal down all of that loot will be worth so much so much so uh yeah we're gonna put up another buy order here and i'm gonna invest some money in into the i'm gonna invest 20 20 bucks of real life money towards master at arms cerebral um projection we're gonna place a buy order buy order here for seventy two oh eight one buy uh, buy ten of them, yep. Seventy two oh eight one right very you know, but look if I can if I can turn around and sell for say eighty eight, that is a serious profit each time serious fucking profit like like after selling five of them i can i get one for free so we are we're, we're gonna start doing uh, big tycoon conjecture on the only two items on the on the auction house that i value and we'll start out with master at arms and when i'm when i'm mega billionaire rich and i can i have like 200 master at arms lying around and i've cornered the market and i've done this before many times in my life i will sit around and i will sling master at arms for i gotta remember the baseline is always got to be more than 88 million but if i'm buying a 72081 and selling for 88 million see it it's it's like endless money and i'm gonna i'm gonna get in on this racket so right now i'm gonna put up i want to buy 10 of these at 72081 10 of them yep 72081 and it doesn't matter because even if i fuck up and i can't sell these for whatever reason uh, it's, it's, it's still, it's, it's a product that I believe in that I'm going to be able to use no matter what. And I like conjecture on, on things like drugs. I, I don't really like doing drug business. I don't like selling drugs, but I like doing conjecture on drugs because no matter what, it'll always be worth something. It never, ever, ever drops to zero. Drugs never drop to zero. They never, ever do. It's, it's, it's like the most, uh, it's the least volatile. It's like the least volatile market there is. Drugs always sell. You can always get a baseline for almost any substance because, because substances actually work they're one of the few products out there that actually work 100 percent of the time you know they're they're actually really good as a product even if it is getting high so this is 15 percent below the the national average so then i i pull I, uh, sorry the regional average so i could pull 15 percent on 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 the sales of all of these i'm inclined to lock up the rest of my money this will cost 742 million she's got 1.3 i think i'll put another five on the bill which puts me at 1.1 1 .1. that'll leave leave me enough money to gamble and i'll and i'll also be able to uh i'll just buy i'll just buy plex you know it's fine I, like not to do this well yeah i might spend 20 bucks on uh, doing master in arms uh conjecture like this because th it'll end up paying out 500 dollars worth of plex you know the 20 bucks that i put into it in, the, in real life will in the end pay out like 500 dollars in plex in the end it will it'll actually pay for it'll help me pay for anything for the rest of my life i think and this one is one of those things <clears throat> most people are actually good and they won't do drug markets i don't give a shit about drug markets i want to hire somebody pay them and have them invest in drug markets where that'll ensure me that i get my money uh, you know that i that i'm paid what i'm what i'm owed at the very least if not the investment money too making quite a, quite a hefty profit afterwards right what's the big and uh i would say that most times once you have like say a hundred thousand or a million dollars I would say you're rich. You're pretty much rich at that point because all you have to do is invest at the hottest in, in the hottest product on the market, right? That's that's selling at the highest volume, right? Which is this. This is selling. I mean, this isn't selling numerous, but it's selling steady. And so you go to a steady market like diamonds or something. People that buy this piece, something that people buy for their wedding rings, and you don't you don't get in the diamond business and become a diamond dealer. You just invest. That's the difference, you know. And I, I really feel that 
like you know i could I'm like one of the really like one of the things i felt that poverty was so bad in my entire life is it was impossible to get enough investment capital together without without working your entire life trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents or whatever i didn't get into the investment game but investment is something i'm naturally talented in i know what the products are i just gravitate to them they're the ones that work all the time that you're always going to need it's, it's, it's that simple people were dead with woo speed luxury has good money too like boe epics i, I mean I made enough money to buy 24 WoW coins off of BOE Epics in the first five weeks of um, uh, Legion. Not Le yeah, uh, not Legion. Um, uh, Warlords of Draenor, right? And I did this by just producing the same purple Epics that I was doing for my Hunter, but selling them on the auction house. And they were paying 45,000 gold, which was like two WoW coins at the time. Two WoW coins or something like that. I don't know what it was. They were paying more than that, but it was like, it was like the, the BOE epic market is always so good, like so good. And that's luxury. The, I mean, that's that's so the, 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 the raiders don't have to sit there and go get their, their BIS weapon off of a boss. They can just go double click something on the auction house and then they've got BIS weapon, right? Which is why BIS weapons are always a really good fucking market, like epic weapons. Beating toward Florida while on the phone was because they'd much rather watch it walk to the auction house and double click than go run a raid for seven weeks and get pissed off about not getting their drops each week, you know. So BOE epics were always a solid fucking market. They're still a solid market. It, it'll be a solid market when there's only a hundred thousand people left playing World of Warcraft on Xbox Games Pass or whatever in, in, in fifteen years. It'll still be a solid market, and I, I'm a big believer in solid fucking markets. Like I, I I don't I don't know what it is, but I've never had a problem producing money out of nowhere and just having funny money you know i've never had a fucking problem doing that like like in the games i do in real life because every time i get funny money together i have to go help somebody that i love you know i've got to go save somebody or i've got to go make a statement about a woman that i'm in love with or something like that there's always some fucking thing i've got to do with smugglers you know? to get help fleeing the country but the police arrested Wu before he could escape and a yep. judge later get him, him get him life boys the possibility of parole and so with all eyes on oklahoma the officials initiated a crackdown and notably a crackdown that they say has nearly half yeah you Pot dealers are kind of acting like shitheads. The end of it, with a bipartisan yeah. group of state and federal lawmakers sending a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland um, in February, Billy Bob Thornton quote, did a very good, very funny, um, cult classic B um, B movie that was big in the underground that we really all genuinely love because it was a big, big piece of, of liberal culture called Homegrown, where he just he's part of the 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 north the northern Cali you know uh, farming marijuana farmer initiative where they all just like you know came for the go the green rush and they all made like a billion dollars and shit and it's kind of funny homegrown came out in 90 fucking seven or something 96 that was a long time ago that was like 28 years ago but that that movie was a way of life for half of california or something like that and, it, and everybody thought it was some kind of comedy or some kind of like like tongue in cheek stab at the northern cali pot farmers but no all that crazy shit that he was talking about was actually stuff pulled straight from the from the news that's actually how they were acting homegrown is a hilarious b comedy movie that's very very funny it really genuinely is and it's got billy bob thornton who never ceases to just crack me up he's like the funniest man alive almost but i mean that movie was not a joke everything in that movie was pulled from the headlines directly from it and a lot of the people in the movie were in the scene too <laughs> tens of illicit marijuana farms across the country calling out and so and so people grew up watching homegrown and then they tried to go make it a reality and what they ended up doing was shooting each other just like in homegrown is this so fucking stupid when you get a bunch of illegal money and the cops can come end your life and, and put you in prison for life just for possession and shit like that people play cold it's a cold game it's the same game as cocaine or heroin when you're playing with the same fucking problems which is like oh i could lose my livelihood and go to jail and have to pay a lawyer to defend myself and all this and get fucking locked up for 40 years on five thousand pounds of pot just pot 5,000 pounds of pot or something like that, right? On an illegal grow license or some kind of big bus like that, right? So they kill each other. They, they, they saw each other's legs off. They, they chop each other's arms off and shit. They take eyes out and stuff. They shoot each other in the leg during drug dealers and shit like the drug deals and shit like this because they're no different, really. They're, 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 they've got the same exact consequences that El Chapo has, which is life in prison. But it's weird because it's marijuana. Why the fuck would you stick someone in prison for marijuana? I don't think marijuana's ever killed somebody. Maybe it has now. There's a lot of stupid with people doing marijuana like i remember hearing a, a police phone call from a police officer to 911 who's like oh i'm gonna die me and my wife ate too much marijuana chocolate and i'm gonna die and they're like no sir no one's ever died from marijuana you're fine 
And he's like, yeah, come get me. Send nine, send, send the ambulance. I'm going to lose my job. I'm a police officer. You got to come help me. We ate too much marijuana. And I'm sure people like that do die. But I don't think... Like, like, yeah, when you eat, like, a pound of marijuana, you probably die, I would say. It probably makes you so sick that you probably can't breathe anymore and you die. But, I mean, like, overall, we're not, marijuana's not real famous for, 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 like, putting, you know, tombstones up on the hill the way heroin and cocaine is, you know? But the dealers kill each other like the heroin and cocaine dealers, which is really weird. It's a non-violent substance, sort of, meant to spread peace and, and chill you the fuck out, but they're killing each other over it. Because there's money and gangsters. Out farms in Oklahoma, as well as in Maine and Oklahoma. Washington State. And with that, also raising the issue of the Chinese Communist Party's involved in the in industry. Oklahoma. And this is one of the key issues that we haven't ah. touched on yet. Basically, it's believed that in exchange for government protection, Chinese gangs provide the CCP with illicit financial services as well as spying on and intimidating Chinese immigrant communities. So on top of these concerns about crime and violence, we have this argument that this is actually a national security issue as well. And you know, all of this isn't to say that marijuana itself or the legalization of this stuff is inherently a bad thing. I mean, we've seen how much real harm has been caused by the criminalization of pot and the war on drugs. And the goal here isn't to vilify Chinese or other immigrant communities. I mean, in fact, the victims of these gangs are more often than not Chinese immigrants themselves. With the investigation noting, they're the ones working under abusive conditions at these farms and being forced into prostitution for the bosses. The whole thing is certainly a lesson in unintended All the girls working with so them end up being hookers. That's the legalization of marijuana has in some ways led to this massive expansion of the underground market. And then, many of you focus on getting your business off the ground, creating a place to share your homemade goods, or even a personal blog. I got a great solution for you. And it comes from and I want to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Squarespace. You know, I've been partnering with Squarespace for years now, and I have to say, it is just so easy. There's nothing you install, patch, or update ever. Creating a beautiful website with Squarespace's Fluid Engine is so easy. You just drag things where you like, no coding necessary. But if you need a starting point, Squarespace is a bunch of great professional templates. Hell, you can even sell custom merch easily. Squarespace handles all the production. So I locked up uh, 15... Uh, 70 million isk purchases of my money or no i haven't done it yet but i'm about to and we're just going to take another look at the conjecture make sure some pop price doesn't pop yet i'm inclined to buy this or whatever the buy i'm, I'm inclined to sell this one but i mean yeah uh i placed a i'm placing a buy order of 15 and then i will place them on the market for 87.990 right and i will make 10 million per and this will make me 150 extra million which will buy me two extra ones and i'll just roll those two extra ones each day and eventually i'll start dealing in two three billion and isk worth of, worth at a time of master at arms and stuff and I'll, I'll i'll maybe even transport to jita and shit like that take some risk maybe with with some blockade runner and that kind of thing uh but in the main in, in the main time in the meantime uh uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, in the meantime, we're going to try and dominate the market. I don't know if you guys have ever seen somebody dominate a market in real time, but I'll show you how to do it. You go to the, the big item that everybody buys. <clears throat> Usually it's ammo. The, uh, but I mean, you, you, you buy the, you know, you buy the item that everybody is using up like, like it's like, like it's candy and master at arms are being used up like candy they really are because they're like the most powerful item on the auction house in terms of its throughput it gives you plus 10 to all attributes for two days this is the most powerful throughput item on the entire uh, auction house and it's dirt cheap too because they're trying to control the price everybody is so we buy a 15 percent off we mark up to 101 percent and you're going to see me do it too i'm going to sell it at 101 percent to the regional average and when they see that i'm selling 20 of them they will buy them right so now that like you know and, and, and if it, right now it's 15 but in a couple of weeks it'll be 30 and in a couple of months it'll be 60 in a year it'll be 120 master at arms at a time that i'm just like like just turning and burning right and if i don't if i if i and, and honestly i can use these every two days 150 times a year or whatever it is 165 times a year or whatever it is uh or whatever 180 times a year or something like this 180 times a year i can use this so it doesn't matter if i buy 180 of them 180 will only last me a year you understand so like on, it's the best market to get into every single mmorpg market every single online market every single gun market every single ammo market everything in, the, in every market there's always some item like this that if you have enough money to get into you get into immediately now watch me watch me like practice what i preach here you know i, I mean this I'm like this stuff is i'm serious business to me i'm spending a billion isk on this see it 
a billion isk and, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna try and flip it into 1.5 I'm gonna try and flip the 1.5 into 3 and the 3 into 6 and the 6 into 12 one day I look up and I've got you know 30 billion in vol volatile master at arms or whatever and I just don't buy the master at arms anymore I just settle with my 30 billion right and now watch I'm calling it before I do it I'm dead serious too. I'm gonna do all everything I just said, every every bit of it. I'm dead serious too. One day I'll wake up and there'll be thirty billion in fucking markets that I just don't want to do anymore because I'm fucking sick of flipping master at arms and going back to Amar over and 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 over again every two days, right? And at that point I'll get out of the market and I just won't post my last, you know, my last whole stack of master at arms or what. I won't buy the re up and I'll just sit there with my thirty billion isk and I'll be like, oh man, I could I could sit I could sit for two years years off the money that i've made i don't have to pay for the game for two years and on top of it i have the the best like the best see it the best training that is possible the, the 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 best training rate that is possible see it 10 points is the highest you can go except for 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 holiday boosters so yeah big fucking market here big big market here big big item big market really good sexy i mean literally you start out with 24 points in in your in your special chart so an extra 10 points in in in, the, in each in each stat i can show you this reflected here an extra 10 points is 30 percent faster training which as a rich person makes me 30 percent stronger than you if you're not doing the same exact thing i'm 30 percent stronger than other people so we, we look at uh right so right now usually my training is uh, 25 points in perception, 26 points in memory, 25 points in willpower. It's the special system. They should have done special. I don't know why they didn't. Intelligence and, and, and charisma and all this, right? And uh, normally that's a real, like a lot lower number. It's like 25, 26, 25, 26, 22, right? But now it's 30. Then, then it's literally like a 30% increase all the time. It's a permanent, I am training 30% faster than anybody else in this entire fucking market that isn't doing this every two days every two days now you would think that everybody would just get on board but 90 million isk is a lot of money still it's actually a lot of money to blow 90 million every two days is a lot of money but i mean the closer i get to being a tycoon every day that passes the training gets a little bit further the money stacks a little higher i make a little bit more ice and a little bit more income and a little bit more friends and all this stuff and one day i'm gonna look up and i'll have 30 billion and i'm not kidding i've done this many times in my life before i'll have 30 billion on a re-up uh, on the drugs right and i just won't re-up and i'll and i'll say it's the same thing as 30 million dollars in real life right you this this is what you do as a drug dealer everybody thinks that it's like oh i sold a sack and now i made 50 bucks off that sack so i can go to the gap and buy my pair of shoes now or shirt or whatever no no what it really is 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 you work really hard for two to five years in a market where you can lose your freedom for the rest of your life and it does it doesn't pay shit you don't have to pay for anything that's all comp to, i mean you have to pay for things like gas and shit that you can't get around not paying but in taxes and rent but i mean like overall everything is comp to you essentially by everybody in the scene because they want you to they know that you're taking the whole lifelong risk of going to jail and stuff so they they they, they, they commensurately re reward you this is why drug dealers make so much money right so yeah and so the, and, and 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 so so how do you become rich as a drug dealer did you think it was selling sacks the answer is no it's not buying the re-up the last day you don't make any money as a drug dealer. I mean, I really believe this. I mean, I, I because I, I witnessed it. You make re-up money and you make good re-up money and you might have business costs that you pay you might even pay for hotel rooms and hookers that you might consider that a, a fucking a business cost or whatever because you're a fugitive of the law you can't have a wife they'll come to your house and they'll they'll stick you up for for a hundred years so you can't have a wife or a house and and and, on, and and if you look at it from that perspective you can see why the pot dealers are buying hookers it's because they can't go they can't go anywhere where they could get busted by the feds you know, including getting married and sitting in a middle class house somewhere they're gonna get f fucking busted by the feds so yeah hookers do well with drug dealers and they should honestly drug dealers need love too you know and shit. so yeah it's just weird this whole thing so like i look at it like like oh everybody seems to think that that oh you can like you know every, the people i'm talking about slinging crack on the corner you don't make any money off slinging 20 dollar fucking crack files or whatever the fuck even the middleman doesn't really make more than like two two grand a week or something like that which is a lot of money but it's not that much money you know it's like eight grand a month it's it's like you know you make about a hundred thousand dollars as a fucking mid-level you know clocker kind of thing or not clocker but uh you know a mid-level like the distribution person that brings the dope to the corner kind of thing the real money 
is the guy up at the top who doesn't buy the re-up at the end. And he walks with the, you know, he walks with the $400 million that he needs for the re-up that he does every month or whatever. And he just doesn't buy it that month. And he, and he, he retires to the Cayman Islands with his demon fucking bankers and all this shit and rapes children or whatever, or whatever I imagine drug dealers, drug dealers do if they retire successfully. Right. And so, yeah. And, uh, and then, and, 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 and this fundamentally you, being a drug dealer, you make no money till the last day. I really believe this. The only time you actually make money as a drug dealer is when you don't buy the re-up on the last day. That's what I did. Plus with Squarespace, you get access to all I walked with, you know, I, I was making 3,600 a day. Or it was, it was less than that. It was like, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was like 3,600 a, a day, 2,200 of which was re-up. And so I was, I was like, I, I was like, man, I'm like the days that I do work like all day for like five days in a row. Like, you know, I do make like a thousand dollars a day and I can live in hotels and I can buy drugs and I can, you know, pay for gas and I can rent cars and I can travel around. Every time I do a drug dealer, drug deal for a hundred dollars, I can let twenty five dollars of it go on an Uber ride. Right. So if you're selling a an eight ball for 90 bucks of, of speed or meth and, you know, and the it costs you 20 bucks to buy that eight ball or whatever. Right. Uh, or more, probably like 30, 40 and you're slinging for 90, you're thinking, oh, 50 bucks profit, but no, I mean, but no, you, you just got, you have to rebuy again. The only time you actually see any profit is when you don't re up again. Cause almost all that money just goes right back in. This is why they call it the game. The game is trying to make it to the end and not paying the re up and not getting killed for not, for not paying the re up at the end. You know, that's, I mean, that's what, that's how it works. And so if you, and, and if you've never been there, you wouldn't know, but I mean, yeah, not paying the re up at the end is the only real payout payout for a drug dealer most of the time they've got to pay all this crazy shit just to keep it all running marketing tools and analytics and their award-winning customers which is how they how they how hookers work too most hookers don't actually make any money believe it or not the pimp makes the money and the pimp buys the hotel room the pimp be beats up the other girls on the block the pimp beats up the other pimps the pimp fucking protects her and waits outside the motel room while she's doing a 200 dollars bang or whatever and makes sure that she doesn't get raped or murdered or any of that shit and yeah and and they don't talk about this but this is the most horrible thing about prostitution is the women themselves if they're real and they're actually successful at it they aren't making a dollar they're they're getting five-star hotel rooms perfect uh perfect health care their kids are being taken care of and tuition is being paid and, and they're being bailed out that the, the hour it happens that kind of stuff and, and 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 this is the most fucked up thing about crime in, in america is, is is prostitution how it currently works and it's not the it's not the women selling the sex it's the pimps trying to control them you know what i'm saying fuck the g-ride i want the machine the machines that are making them and, and those pimps are are the same exact way they don't care about a single lay for 200 bucks they want all the money from the, from the hooker all the time and they make sure that the cops don't ever touch the hooker the, the 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 clientele don't ever touch the hooker in any way she doesn't want like you know all this other shit right and and what they really are a pimp is not some fucking you know some fucking like oh i'm just uh you know i mean a pimp is actually just security you know both social and physical security their team via email or live chat 24 7 and so this is how pimps stay out of jail and hookers don't you know it's the same old fucking problem it's, it's it's bullshit pimps stay out of jail all they do is all they do is receive the money it's always the girl selling the sex in the moment that gets busted you know what i'm saying but pimps don't get busted it's one of the reasons why all those rappers talk about being pimps all the time pimps don't face shit usually it's stupid so go check it out see why others love it see why you're gonna love it and start your free trial today over at squarespace.com slash phil just make sure you enter an offer code phil to get 10 percent off your first purchase and then we just saw one tiny mistake lead to a virtual genocide in iowa this month right, so virtual as far as this mistake was it someone from the agricultural firm new cooperative they left a valve open oh, on an above yeah. ground fertilizer storage tank over a week yeah, with reportedly 265,000 gallons of liquid nitrogen solution spilling first into a drainage ditch then into the east nishinabotna river and it then flowing and continuing until it finally went into a small part of the Missouri River. Now, here's the thing. When liquid nitrogen reacts with relatively warm water, it creates ammonia, which is a gas that's toxic to aquatic life. Right, so with the amount of chemicals that we're talking about here, this river system became a deadly gassy mess, causing what one Missouri <laughs> official called a near total... I call for jail for life for the 
person responsible for the Nishna Botna River Crisis. Was it Nishna oh, Botna? This river's Nishna Botna River Crisis. Yep. system became a deadly gassy mess causing what one missouri official called a near total fish kill for 60 miles with nearly eight 60 miles of river hundred thousand fish reportedly dying and piling up on the banks of the rivers we're talking about everything from minnows shiners dace and chubs to shovel nose sturgeon blue suckers catfish and carp Though somewhat fortunately the vast majority were smaller species so the actual loss of biomass is much lower than the numbers suggest but still we're talking about this being iowa's worst fish kill since runoff from a dairy farm in 2013 killed more than 800 000. and a fisheries biologist telling the new york times the ecosystem could take decades to fully recover though also very much worth noting here we're talking about this because this was a large one but small and medium-sized fish kills actually happen pretty frequently in the United States. Oh. So for example, officials in the neighboring state of Missouri responded to around 100 a year. And the leading cause of these being pollution. 100 a year! Wastewater. That's also not to say, like, this is inevitable. Or for example, environmental activists in Iowa, they've been pushing for stricter regulations to keep agricultural nitrates out of the water. You see, the farmers, they have a lot of influence over their state's legislature, which is currently controlled by Republicans. But as far as what's next here, you know, the focus is on cleaning up this month's mess. With officials warning people to avoid recreational activities on the river and not to collect or consume dead fish found near it. While most of the initial spill has left the system, it is possible that some nitrogen settled near the riverbed, which is very important to know because when the temperature starts warming during the spring, that could actually create more ammonia, killing even more fish. But for now, we're going to keep our eyes on this, not only to see what comes from the authorities investigating this, but also to see what our next uh, completely preventable disaster will be. And then, Israeli opposition to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has reached a new high, with tens of thousands gathering in Jerusalem yesterday in one of the largest protests the country has seen in recent history. And this coming just a day after thousands demonstrated in Tel Aviv, right? And both of these protests centering around demands for Bibi's resignation. Though I should also note that some of the protesters were simply demanding that Israel's negotiating team be given more leeway in securing a deal for the release of hostages. And also with that, notably in-person talks between Israel and Hamas have actually started up again in Cairo. It's also hard to be optimistic about those talks as we've seen them lead to nothing time and time again. And for many of those protesting in Israel this weekend, Netanyahu has been one of the reasons why. For example, a family member of one hostage who was killed telling AP that the government is busy putting sticks in the wheels of negotiations for the hostages, and adding that Netanyahu is only working in his private interest. And something notable about about these protests is how these criticisms of Netanyahu's handling of the hostage situation, how they're now being linked to criticisms that existed long before October 7th. You know, the accusation that Netanyahu is only working in his private interests is also fueled by the corruption allegations he's been facing. Why is my screen all color weird? Okay. Oh. It's the HDR is messing up, I think facing for years. And similarly, we've seen protesters saying that his attempt to overhaul the judiciary last year to reload you division. Now. In the wheels of negotiations for the hostages, and adding that Netanyahu is only working in his private interests. And something notable about these protests Whoa. is how these criticisms of Netanyahu's handling of the hostage situation, how they're the now hell? being linked to criticisms that existed long before October 7th. You know, the accusation that Netanyahu is only working in his private interests is also fueled by the corruption allegations he's been facing for years. And similarly, we've seen protesters saying that his attempt to overhaul the judiciary last year created political divisions that weakened Israel ahead of the attack by Hamas. With Rebecca Ritter, a correspondent for German broadcaster DW News, explaining. Is it certainly starting to resemble some of the bigger anti-government demonstrations we were seeing God damn in the right. lead up last year. Resign, lead bitch. Up to the war. Go to sleep. Uh, that was against, of course, plans to overhaul the judiciary. Now, what we're also seeing, as well as a change in fervor, is uh, the merging of two separate protests. Uh, and one, of course, being that anti-government protest I speak of, but there have been weekly rallies uh, a vid that started out as kind of a vigil, if you will, for the hostages. And that is now moving into to join this anti-government protest, so it's growing in size. Notably, this all comes as Netanyahu has to decide whether or not to extend the exemption that ultra-Orthodox Jews have from Israel's compulsory military service. But some say this dispute could actually wow. lead to the collapse of his government, as either decision is going to alienate some of his allies. But in any case, Netanyahu has ruled out early elections and restated his intention to launch an attack against Hamas in the southern city of Rafah. And with that, it's important to note that Israelis are generally not divided about going after Hamas. Or while protesters take issue with the way that the war is being handled and the failure to rescue or free all the hostages, there is overwhelming
overwhelming support there for that objective. But that's where we are as the death toll in Gaza now reportedly exceeds 30,000 and you have UN officials warning of imminent famine. And then cataclysmic. That's the word the UN used to describe the situation in Haiti in a report released last week as corruption, impunity, and poor governance along with ever increasing levels of gang violence have brought the country to the brink of collapse. And it's already led to the resignation of a prime minister, the near complete takeover of the country's capital by a gang leader known as Barbecue, and the deaths of at least 1,500 people this year. And now we're seeing the Wall Street Journal reporting that the violence is fueled at least in part by how easy it is to buy guns in the U.S. With them finding that the vast majority of weapons going into the country are often purchased in American stores, often by so-called straw buyers acting as stand-ins for the gangs, and then they're sent to Haiti as disassembled parts hidden in shipments of other goods. And it's actually sort of because of how these weapons are smuggled that it's so hard to stop. You see, they're not making bulk shipments here. Instead, a vessel packed with other cargo only has a few guns. And in the past, they've been found inside things like secondhand televisions, furniture, paint buckets, and food items, as well as secondhand vehicles. And actually, in one 2022 case, a woman tried to board a flight to Haiti with a handgun hidden inside of a chicken. And so basically, while officials do intercept lots and lots of weapons, they say it's almost impossible to look through every single shipment as thoroughly as would be needed to find every one. So as a result, 300 or so gangs are running rampant in the country with better weapons than the police. So also, to be clear, right, the situation's been bad in Haiti for a long time, with, for example, more than 11,000 homicides logged from 2019 through 2023. And the violence has just been steadily increasing, with 4,789 homicides registered in 2023 alone, up 119% from 2022. And the 1,500 killings so far this year put the country on the track to exceed that toll. And notably, with this increase in violence, there's been an increase in not only the number of U.S. bought guns going into the country, but also in how powerful they are. With Anthony Salisbury, who heads Homeland Security Investigations in Miami, telling the Journal, what we started noticing that was concerning was the increase in the caliber and the volume of the weapons going there, and it was significant. And adding, as soon as we started seeing these weapons, you started seeing the spike in violence and murders going on. You know, to that point, the UN found the gangs have only recently started using more deadly hollow point bullets. And this is U.S. investigators recently obtained audio recordings of gang members, quote, speaking enthusiastically about securing more powerful weaponry and ammunition. And as far as why we're seeing this, well, it's the money, stupid. I mean, if it wasn't so deeply unethical and disgusting, like, I'd be interested in the numbers. Like, it puts the makeup industry's margins to shame. With the UN finding that a semi-automatic rifle purchased for a few hundred dollars in the US can go for as much as $8,000 in Haiti. And that, as a 50 cal sniper rifle valued at like $10,000 in the US, can be sold for up to $80,000 to a gang. But that also has resulted in people going, well, how can these gangs afford this? And well, for a long time, it was corrupt businessmen and politicians financing and arming Haiti's gangs. But now you've got the journal saying that it's the gang bosses, not politicians or oligarchs that are largely calling the shots. And according to UN expert William O'Neill, that's because, quote, they make so much money now from kidnapping, extortion, and stealing stuff that they have developed independent sources of income they didn't have before. Right? So basically, you have the situation where U.S. guns are both contributing to the horrific violence taking place in Haiti right now and the ability of Haiti's gangs to make money to buy more guns and cause more violence. It's a problem that feeds itself into growing bigger and bigger. But from now, we'll have to wait to see what happens with and what comes from all the chaos. And then, finally today, let's talk about the comments on the last video. Usually we call it yesterday today, though I've seen more and more people starting to call it comment commentary. Sure, viewer's choice. But whatever you call it, there were a lot of comments on that last show, which was also fantastically the only one last week that seemingly was not suppressed by YouTube. And a lot of people were sounding off on that messy Hawaii situation where people built and sold a home on a woman's property. And then all of a sudden now she's she and pretty much everyone else involved are in these crazy legal troubles. With Unsweet Sweet saying the fact that they think this woman is unreasonable for not wanting her property to be stolen from them. And Mr. Adam R saying, right, she paid for a thing. It was stolen from her and sold off. And somehow the developer is allowed to even suggest that she's at fault. And Limner's saying the developer should pay to tear down the house and restore the vegetation to its previous condition. The woman obviously owns the land and is not responsible for what amounts to vandalism. Just because you make something you like doesn't mean it's not vandalism. Then Twiz adding, why is there even a legal battle over that woman's home and property? She didn't sell. It's hers. The state needs to heavily find the contractors responsible, remove whoever in the county approved the build, and bring her taxes back to the normal rate. She also deserves some sort of security to remove the squatters. That's absolutely disgusting we even have to have the conversation. Quote, it would set a bad precedent if you could just build on people's property like what? That's never been allowed because our forefathers had the foresight to know that's stupid. <laughs> Though to that, you had Captain Eco saying, not to be that person, but our forefathers built our country on doing exactly that. And then in addition yep. to all the back and forth on that, there was a lot of conversations around for-profit prisons. Because we talked about the lawsuit and scandals involving visitation, or rather the lack of it and pushing people towards things where they get to charge families for video calls. And while there was no shortage of people sharing their opinions, there were also a lot of people that shared their experiences. With CNOW82 saying, unfortunately, my brother's been in and out of jail his whole life. Started in the Aww. 90s. Back then, we could come visit in person, talk, and hang out. Mm -hmm. In the last 20 years, now, it has been insane. They've de they're now they've de dehumanized them. Yep. They've been de dehumanized. It's, it's
it's it, i mean fuck the system i will not break the law again if it means entering the system i'll die first i'll kill anybody who tries to make me do it entering the system to me is worse than butt rape it's worse than war service it's worse than um uh, torture it's like the worst thing that could ever possibly happen to a human is entering the american legal system or i'm sorry the prison american prison system the, the prison industrial complex i used to laugh at that phrase but i mean now it's it's a cold hard reality that that is the accurate assessment of what it is they're doing and it has been for 10 years it's not it hasn't been a joke that used to be a grand theft auto joke that oh how i love the prison industrial complex right but i mean it's not a joke anymore that was a grand theft auto vice city joke now it's apropos and 10 years it's been 10 years past when everybody knew it was like that too it's like it's just it's, it's like a given now if you're in the prison system you done fucked up and you're in the gulag for the rest of your life Go to a video key. So I fought to stay out of it. I begged people. I conjoled lawyers. I, I I tried to bribe them. I did whatever. I tried to bribe officials. I did anything I could to stay out of jail. I was like, nah, man. <clears throat> nope. Ask to visit now, mostly video visits and phone calls. It is insanely expensive. Not because not I can't handle jail. Not because I don't deserve it. Not because I'm some asshole who wants to skate on, on all my transgressions or something like that. But because I believe it is worse than Guantanamo Bay. I think I would rather face Guantanamo Bay, Guantanamo Bay than Denver County jail also there's been a lot of deaths in the denver county jail due to covid you want to die of covid be in a jail that's a good way to die of covid all those covid hoax deniers and all that shit go and take a look at how many prisoners died this year of, of jail induced covid you think that shit's a fucking myth i think you're a myth periods without being able to talk because i couldn't afford it because you don't just pay for visits there's commissary and gifts you can buy all with fees just depositing money has a fee now the for-profit prison system is disgusting these yeah, people are the, treated the, like yeah, it's it's the, it's like every bit of it uh I, when i went in there the friend like, when i went into county jail for i think it was 17 days 13 days something i forget what it was it was less than three weeks and my best friend bailed me out on that when, 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 when he really shouldn't have, well, I mean, he should have, but I mean, it, it was just kind of funny. He did bail me out and it was expensive. It'll be weird when the check clears on the on the on the sale of my house and this uh, this fifth wheel. I'm gonna sell this fifth wheel for for like forty grand because when with the television and everything in it, I think it'll go for a lot more. I think when, after my mom fixed it up, this thing will go for a lot more than what we bought it for. Probably like double what what you know what what we paid, and it's still in good shape. I've been keeping good condition of it. So when my parents inevitably pass, I will sell my house. I will sell this fifth wheel. I will I will trip out on the whatever, you know, $700,000 in my bank account or whatever. I'm going to trip out on that. And I'm going to be like, wow, I'm going to buy another fifth wheel probably for like a hundred grand. I'm going to spend like a seventh of it on, on, a, on another fifth wheel. And I'm going to buy a lot or I'm just going to rent. Like I'm going to, I'm going to pay up front like 20 years on a, on a, on a lot rental um or something or i'm not or i'm just gonna set aside in savings the money that i pay the lot rental with like like the day that i get the check i'm gonna set aside a hundred thousand dollars to pay for lot rentals in denver and i will i will purchase a fifth wheel in denver and i will move it to a lot on a trailer park because that's kind of where i, I would like to be i think is where I, I i've always been sort of you know and um I will, unless I'm famous or rich or whatever, and then I'll have to do something different, but I will take that and I will take, uh, a hundred thousand dollars of it and i will pay my be best friend because i owe my best friend eleven thousand dollars i'm gonna pay i always told him i would pay him tenfold and i know secretly deep down that he did not believe me because the, he felt that the world was too jaded and fucked up but no nah, anybody can actually get ahead if you're just lucky and so i will step and i will pay a hundred thousand dollars to my best friend and i mean this i promise on my father's grave i'm gonna do this i mean i've been thinking about it a lot lately i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna slap down a hundred thousand dollars on my um, on my best friend and uh and uh, and 
then uh, I will buy. I will. I will put the money aside for 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 the rest of my life. It'll probably be about 50, 50 years, right? I'll put forty years of of a lot rental fee in a bank account, which will be something like one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, right? And I will make sure that I can pay the law fees for the rest of my life. And I will make sure that I have the, the, mo the, the most brand new spanking modern fifth wheel that you can get that, you know, that isn't, you know, that doesn't look like a rich person's home, but just is, does have all the amenities of a really good home, you know, even a, a dining room and shit like that. And I will move it to this lot and I will permanently live there right there in Platte Park, uh, Platte Park, Colorado and Denver. And I'm sure this dream will get, this dream will get murdered like all my other, you know, like all the other dreams, I guess. But but it's good to have it it's good to shoot it the dream will get murdered as it always is like like all the other times i ever dared to dream but um <clears throat> i will live in the like i'm still a glass half full person i will live with that dream for a long time and it's a reality that will happen the money part of it will happen like it's it's certain so then uh i go and i pay off all my debts i set myself up on a place to live for the rest of my life and i sell their house to do it because i don't want to live in their house i don't want to live where i live I don't think I want to live where I, where I grew up, you know? So where my friends are and, and then I will have, you know, about, I think it's something like $500,000 left to live on for some 50 years. So, I mean, that won't work, you know, that, I mean, that's, yeah, it's like, like, what is that? That's 10. Well, I mean, it will work if I have a fifth wheel and I live frugally and you know and and all this and, and i mean i'm on disability that won't end if i if i sell my parents house because i'm gonna immediately just like buy a new home or whatever i doubt the government will even like like care i don't think so at that point i also probably have social security by that point i think or well i don't know i didn't work so oh, i did work but i mean i didn't work a career job so i don't know i don't know how that works but in any event i'm gonna make sure that i'm never wanting even at the age of a hundred even if the even if the the rent is is goddamn 10 grand a month or whatever i mean like i'm gonna make sure and i'm not gonna buy fancy things you know i'm just gonna live exactly how i've been living for the rest of my life whether i get rich or famous or not no matter what i'll be okay and i really I, I, and, and unless the world burns or something right but i have a lot of faith that it won't and now uh and i look at that and and, and honestly all i really had to do was try to be a good person finally i was I, I didn't try to do that the first like 25 years of my life i just did whatever was fun now i'm a good enough person to do whatever is fun but but do it like morally correct and not hurting people or any of that other stuff or or being a criminal or any of that and i've become a much more responsible person i have reformed it has been it has been six years since i've done a hard drug you know I've, i'm doing pretty good and so my just desserts is, is I don't want worry. I worried all my life for everybody that I knew. I thought, I thought this world was going to die. I thought I'd be dead by the age of 25 and I tried and I failed. And like, you know, and I, I, all I really want is a life without worries. That's it. I don't, I don't need some fancy apartment or hookers or money or dope or clout or any of that stupid shit that all the other fucking humans fucking obsess about. All I really want is security. That's it. I want security. I have it right now. I know I, I don't wake up in the morning with fear like I did my entire fucking life until I was 39. Every single day of my life past the age of like 11 or something like that. I woke up in the morning with a deep seated fear that if we didn't do something, we were going to fry on the streets and die of deprivation and, and destitute and be destitute. And I and it was like that for some years of my life. We were on, on the streets. I was on the streets. I mean, it was like that. I, I did. I did fall to destitution. My only social agreement with America anymore is that if, if and this is my gift from my parents. This is what they. My mother. She knows that this wasn't easy. This life was not easy for me. I. I, I would have chosen not to be here if I could. You know, this was not an easy life. Being Aspergers and crazy, and just off the charts and and just type A personality and stuff. It was not an easy life for me. I was constantly pursuing suit and it was it was just goddamn stupid it was riddled with death and, and problems and so i want like a peaceful life i'd be okay with a lower class lifestyle in a, in a trailer park with my 12 pack of crappy paps blue ribbon for the rest of my life living off 10 grand a year you know than trying to be Billie Eilish, right? I, I'm sorry, and then and that might happen anyways, or whatever. But but I don't think so. I just you know, and 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 that was the dream. That is that that is my dream. It's it's security. I think the American dream now is not dying in prison. 
animals. Not all inmates are murdered. My, my, my American dream right now consists of not dying in prison. That's pretty fucked up. That's a sad state of affairs. That's the that's the best that I can hope for is to not die in prison. You know. In summer, that's innocent. how dark it's been. I admit many times they threatened me with it. They were like, "Uh, you'll probably do ten years on this, and you'll be in the system, and you'll be back in after that." They, they, they would tell me that they were like, "Yeah, if you go in for ten years, you're not leaving this motherfucker. You'll be in and out for the rest of your life." And I was like, "Yeah, I know, I know." Our justice system is more about making... And so we fought. We fought hard. They were like, everybody I ever met, they're like from the lawyers to the judges, all of them, everybody they ever I ever met, they were like, you are far too smart and far too like like verbose and, and far too aware of what the situation is to be doing stupid shit like this. And we're not going to fuck you in the ass. We're going to cut you a break that we don't cut other people. This is this is what they always say. But the, but, the, but the problem is, it never needed to be like this. You never needed to make the drugs illegal in the first fucking place. The problem stems from you. It never stemmed from me. It never stemmed from me. The problem stemmed from the government and the people. That The drug war stemmed from the government. And the drug war was a failure. And I was a terrible, terrible victim of it. They held, they held, they held life in jail over... Not life in jail, but they, they held 10 years in jail and a life of recidivism over my head for like 17 years and shit. It was, it was, it was fucking terrible. It was disgusting. Akon talked about it and made, it made billions off of it. We're about to watch a video about Akon's scam city. You're going to see how much money people can make talking about being trapped in the prison industrial system and I, I i'm sick of it i'll talk about it i'm not trying to beat the drums of revolution i'm talking about somebody does need to, to acknowledge how bad these people like let this country get money then it's time to acknowledge it it is time to fix it you have let this country turn into a prison industrial fucking quagmire and it must stop it must stop we must free my people now S open every cell in attica send them to africa something i don't know what the fuck you you can do but you you, you got to do something you got you cannot do this prison industrial shit anymore you've got to stop that drug war you got to stop fucking leaning on it let me buy my heroin and speed at, at the walgreens like a normal fucking person stop fucking doing this stupid el chapo bullshit stop trying to chase and, and race racially fucking profile the mexicans for selling us cocaine stop fucking doing all the sin you're the one buying cocaine you're the i don't buy cocaine you guys buy cocaine richers buy cocaine and you, yeah and i'm sorry and then you racially fucking profile the mexican drug dealers selling it to you where the fuck did you think cocaine co cocaine came from and it's caused this terrible the, the, the latin america will never forget the way we treated them over this they will never forget it and every single day i think about how the white rich rich white prison industrial fucking complex ruined my fucking country and how we essentially are are we are very 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 inordinately god lucky that we haven't had a race war in this goddamn country over the stupid shit we do as rich white people we are lucky there has not been a race war and I'm sorry, that's really how I feel. The prison industrial complex, this guy talking about his brother uh, being in this system since the 90s and shit and how much how much pain and suffering this has caused him. That is a common story in this country and it is absolutely unnecessary for it to be so. It wasn't like that for 20 million years or something. It's only been like that for about 100 years. Your fascism over drugs and it's got to stop. It's it's a failed experiment and I want you out of here for even for even engaging in it. Any 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 American politician that engaged in the drug war to me is an enemy of the people and I don't want I don't I don't I do not call for their deaths. I call for all of their resignations. Anybody who worked in a drug war government, I want them out of here. Gone. Bye. You are traitors to your own country and your own people. And, and, and sooner or later, somebody will hold you accountable for it. Your drug war is uh, your, your, your war on the poor and your war on your own country and all the problems and stuff. I'm going to hit you with the XKVCD hat guy wisdom, right? The consequences of being a drug addict are the are being a drug addict. You don't need jail and the law and guns and El Chapo on top of it. That's stupid, richer, white bullshit. You know it is. It's a, it's a it's a fucked up, stupid way to run this country and this world. I don't trust you and anybody who did engage in it. I want them out of my government now. I th have you have you used a traitor to my people? You have fucking put all of this guy talking about his brother. I everybody I know's got a story like this. I'm his brother. You understand? I'm his brother, but I was smart and smart enough to stay out of it. I was smart enough to stay out of it, but I had the same record rap sheet. I guarantee it. And like, but the difference, the difference was uh, like, I knew uh, knowing I, I was old and I was, I was old and I'm sorry. I was, I was young enough. Excuse me. I was young enough. I was, I was young millennial enough to know that the entire thing was worthless. It represented no value to me, only damage. And it did not help America. It only harmed us. It imprisoned all of our best people and, and destroyed all of our best people. And it has just, 
just killed this country and perhaps the world. And anybody who engaged in the drug war, I want them the fuck out of here. I consider them to be full-blown traitors. I don't want them incarcerated. I just want them out of their jobs. Anybody who engaged in it, anybody who ever thought it was okay, I consider it to be the ultimate betrayal of uh, the, the worst, the, the, the most ultimate betrayal in mankind's history. Worse than, than the, it's cost more lives. It's, it's worse. It's gotten worse now than, than, than and I'm not trying to say that the, 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 the World War II and, and the Holocaust weren't weren't incredibly bad fucking things. I'm not trying to, it's apples and melons. I'm not comparing them. I am saying it is worse than, it, the numbers have grown to be worse than World War II, the drug war. It has to stop. The, the 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 latin racism it has to stop you cannot you 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 can you can no longer uh you can no longer profile my people they are americans i will not stand by while you, while you fucking do it i will not support you i will not vote for you i do not want you in office i don't want you talking about mexico i don't want you talking about border i don't want you talking about fucking immigrants i want you talking about the policies and the laws that fucked up that situation in the first fucking place you fucking drug war fucking traitor Get the fuck out of my country. Get the fuck out of my Congress. Get the fuck out of here. Traitor, you kill my own people. You you, you you hunt the worst poor people in the deepest inner cities and shit and put them up against the worst wall that I've ever conceived of. And I say, you you are a traitor and I want you out of here. Anybody who supported that drug war, I think it's time for you. I, I think it's time for the chickens to come home to roost. You supported that fucking drug war. I want you out of this country. I want you out of this. You can stay in the country, but I want you out of that government. I don't think you should face jail time. I think you were just fucking stupid stupid so i'm not gonna fucking slap you for being fucking stupid but i will take your job i don't want you to have a job if you supported that drug war any of them d d democrats republicans i don't care if you supported that betrayal of my fucking people i consider you to be worse uh, as as bad of a traitor as say hitler or something like that you betrayed the national trust you you hunted your own people you are disgusting traitors I, I will not ever view it dis I, I will not view it differently ever and I will not ever wheel or deal deal with you I will not fucking vote for you I will not support your initiatives you have betrayed the human you have betrayed the, not only the human race but also your own country and your own countrymen you are the worst pieces of shit that ever spawned in this country you you engaged in that hundred year fucking drug war and I'm sorry but it was a debacle from day one and here we are at day 5,000 or whatever and uh whatever man like straight out or whatever 50,000 we're at day 50,000 thousand now or whatever and it has never saved a life it has never served a purpose it has only been a war on your own people and i would see you up against the wall for it and by up against the wall i don't mean your life i'm talking about your job i would see you fend in the fucking gutters as we did after we caught drug charges i would see you go through the same thing that you did to us you are an ultimate traitor. You have been living a hundred years on the death and the sorrow and the misery of the inner cities in this country with that, with that fucked up drug war from rich white shitheads. And I want you the fuck out of here. I, I will never vote for you again. Rehabilitation or safety. And the people are demonized. You are a fucking traitor. You are a full-blown traitor. You have sacrificed your own people to some sort of goddamn drug war god. And I hate you for it. And I want you out of my government, you fucking traitor. As most people are poor, how many rich people get locked up? Am I wrong? Google it. It, it. Has anything I said been factually wrong? No. Everything I said was 110% true. And the hatred, you've just been skating on by. You you thought we were just going to sit there and be fucking sheep while you stomped in on our necks and shit for, for 100 years. No, no. The chickens will come home, to, come home to roost. We won't take it in blood, but we will take your jobs. We will not vote for you anymore. You're done. Praying your your drug war betrayal has killed this country, and I, I am sick of it. I want you out of here. You have killed this country. You are you are a bad captain. I don't want you steering anymore. Not Republican, not Democrat. Neither one. That's they true. both they both back the drug war, and that's a good reason to never vote Democrat or Republican ever the fuck again. You kill my people. You fucking torture me all my life. You threaten me, my own people, with fucking jail in my own country. When my fucking family came over on the motherfucking original boats and shit, same as them. And, like, I don't care who you think it is, Mexican or otherwise, they all came over here the same way your family fucking did. They're no different from you, you fucking racist traitor pieces of shit drug war cock sucking fucking worthless asshole stealing our money and wasting our time and incarcerating our own people get the fuck out of my government you worthless piece of shit traitors get the fuck out of here just shows how to prison industrial complex every day that it goes on every time you open another prison every time you make a video game called you know prison architect and shit every single fucking time you push this prison industrial goddamn debacle that destroyed this country i think more and more about how it should be the wall i think more and more about how it should be the wall 
I, I want your job right now. How long are you going to fucking betray us and fuck us up our own at, uh, our own fucking people? Fucking us up. Our rape, like literally ass raping us. It's a bunch of ass blasting. Like always, like always Sonny said. Politics are a bunch of ass blasting from both fucking sides. You want to get fucked by the Republicans? By the drug war? Or do you want to get fucked by the Democrats for, because of the drug war? You want to get fucked on the pro-life issue whether you're pro or against? Go right the fuck ahead. Vote Republican and Democrat. Be the fucking sheep. Be the fucking asshole. Support the fucking traitors. Support the drug war that killed our country and our people. And fuck you, you worthless pieces of shit. I don't want you out of my country, but I definitely want your jobs. I want your jobs. I would take your jobs if I could. Disgusting this system is. In response to Traitor. That you and that fucking drug war in this prison industrial complex. I haven't heard anybody even fucking mention it on a fucking podium in 50 fucking years because you really are bullshit worthless traitors who really hate the poor. I really don't want you running this country anymore. You are a based fucking shitty rich culture of white people that do not respect anything or anyone. That you would acid funkish addict. The problem, not for the prisons, but- Tell me I'm wrong. Google it, bitch. People. Is that connections to the outside? I'm not wrong. Everything I said here can be factually backed up. I'm not saying anything that isn't real, I'm isn't true. These are not, this is not hyperbole. Factually statement, all of it. Your your prison industrial system has killed this country. These are not hyperbolic fucking statements. The ones that are maintained throughout a sentence have a big impact on not only their behavior in prison, but their recidivism yep. rate as well. Great incentive for the prisons, but really absolutely. Absolutely. So, every, so we call it the con college, right? If you aren't a criminal, it'll be when you went to jail you're definitely a criminal when you left the jail right so and then this is in the called con college if you weren't criminal yet you are now the awful human impact you know, yeah I, and it's an awful human impact it's a goddamn I savage hypocrisy stop. i do not want my people in jail for nonviolent fucking drug offenses get that the fuck out of here piece of shit traitors and i'll kill your parties over it i'll kill both your parties if i could i would very willingly kill the republican and the democratic party out of this country i don't care if they've got 300 oh, years of steeped jumping. fucking history in this country look at what you did with it wars Wars as long as we've been around. Racial wars. Goddamn World War One, World War Two. I'm sure we're headed for World War Three. It's goddamn fucking disgusting. Wars, prison industrial complex, racism, fucking poverty, and, and classist, separatist, fucking rich white bullshit. And I'm fucking sick of it. I will not stand by while you kill my people. I will not condone actions that take my people to war. And I will not I will not stand by while you kill the weakest in our fucking the weakest you know, the stone that the builder refused shall be the head corner stone. You wanna you wanna pariah these I'm people for doing drugs? Me. I wanna pariah you for pariahing pariahing them. Uh, these are my beloved people. They are my fellow Americans. They are no less or no more valuable than Joe fucking Biden. And a good man would know this, and then but instead you throw do you throw us all in jail for a hundred years what the literal fuck is wrong with you no i'm not voting for you again are you wicked to quote the great you know the great fucking um you know uh, what's his name tommy lee jones from from lincoln are you what's wrong with you are you a republican are you a democrat are you wicked are you, either party are you wicked yeah, I think you are. You are wicked. You pushed the drug war for a hundred years. I don't give a piece of shit fucking one little iota of a piece of shit. I don't give a shit. A little tiny iota of a shit what you think about drugs. You never should have been imprisoning, imprisoning anybody for it. What the fuck is that? Find them to death. Take the drugs from them. There's all kinds of crazy things you could do to stop the problem. But, but prison is not it, you piece of shit traitors. Get the fuck out of here, piece of shit traitors. With many of the comments saying, you know, for-profit prisons, we see a prison's lot of Prison's not it. The solution to all of our problems is not to incarcerate all of America. You piece of shit fascist traitors, Republicrats. Get the fuck out of here. Barbaric. Your parties are dead. You killed our people for too far, too fucking long. I won't support you anymore. I will not vote Republican, Democrat ever again. I'm not voting. I'm not supporting you. You're done. Your parties are dead to me. You, you betray us like this for this long. Each year that the drug war goes on and you don't fucking take your boot off of our fucking, take your fascist boot off of our fucking like strangling necks uh, in our prison industrial debacle. I think about how, oh, the wall becomes more and more appropriate. You understand what? What I mean when I say to quote the great Radiohead or whoever they were quoting, <clears throat> when I am king, 
You will be first against the wall. Understand? And by wall, you can make your own assumptions about that. The longer you let this drug war go, the longer you let this prison industrial complex war go on my in, on my home soil, in my home country, I am more scared of my own government than any foreign fucking country's government. I am far more scared of the American government than Russia or China combined. And understand, that must end. You, you have lived your fascist lives for too fucking long. You stopped, you, you, you prison industrial complex to place. You imprisoned all the poor drug addicts and all the fucking drug dealers and all this stupid shit. And, and I'm sorry, but you know why people do crime. It's because they're poor. Plainly evil things. But I, would I know why you do crime. It's because you're rich. Just to say, I think it's one of the most transparent things. Yeah, and this is, this is like, you know, it's, 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 it's. it's in our society like, well it's not something it's, that it's, might be top of mind unless you have yeah to. like we don't talk about this because we don't care we don't give two shits what happens to people in this country we don't love our fellow americans anymore the drug war did that to us the drug war made it so we don't love ourselves anymore we hate you we don't love our government you what you did to us is unacceptable and it's lasted for 50 fucking years and i would see you be punished for 50 years you can't work in the government for 50 Auto years jumping. you know what i'm saying which means that yeah in your lifetime you're done in this government i, I would i would take your job if i could when you care about that's actually in prison right now is it showcasing how we have i got so a lot of people that i love in jail right now i'm not gonna run out the fucking names because it's disrespectful but jesus fucking christ what's wrong with you see people is people how people have become and have been for a while products to be exploited in a system either devoid of humanity or uh has uh, tastes, are you wicked uh, bits of humanity kind of as window dressing and then the final thing i'll mention is there were people that were like say pay money wubbies day you used his clip you credited moist critical which yeah i think one of the editors sourced a clip that was a reaction to that i don't know whatever it wasn't on purpose it was a road show little things like this happened uh what i think is a little bit more on road shows so there you go that is where today's show is gonna end one as always thank you for being a part of these daily dives into the news two make sure to get in while you can over at beautifulbastard.com remember the fool's sale ends tomorrow at 8 a.m pacific till then code fools get you 25 percent off and three as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've Junkie. just been filled in. I love yo faces. I loved I'll see it. You right back here tomorrow. It was good. Hells yeah. Bump it. Here's uh, Modern Games Are Wasting Our Time by Frankly Gaming. Thank you so much for the excellent content for my stream. I have liked to sub to your channel. We're spinning up the next video. Sorry that the PDS took so long, but most of those subjects are stuff that were are near and dear to my fucking heart, which is rare on the PDS show. There's the record labels fucking up the place. There's the government fucking up the place. There's the chemical companies dumping billions of chemicals into our rivers and killing, you know, millions of millions of fish in in, in you know in in America a hundred times a year. There's uh, passion about that. One. I'm passionate about fucking the prison industrial complex and the war on drugs and the and the betrayal of our people and the and the the necessary closure we must get and, and and we can't vote for them anymore. We can't vote for either party. They killed us. We cannot we cannot vote for these traitors any longer. We cannot vote for I don't care who you vote for, but it cannot be for the traitor Republican and Democrat parties. They have put, put our own people up, you know, put put put, put our own people in jail. They, they they the the worst war that they conducted was not the Ionola gay unfortunately it was the drug war on their own people and i'm, and I'm not saying that, that that hiroshima wasn't really 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 bad that's another example of, of of the government just attacking its own people essentially you know um and approaching stargate yeah passionate about everything that he talked about you know what i'm saying passionate about billy passionate about taylor yep Sup, you Oops. beautiful bastards. Sorry. You're skipping it forward. This is Modern Games Are Wasting Our Time. Thank you so much, Frankly Gaming, for the extra content from a stream. I'd like to sub to your channel. Games are wasting our time. Oh, I can't stand I it. Mean that in the sense I can't, they aren't I can't handle it. I made a whole chain no, they're worth our time, but they I waste our time a lot. I mean it in the Shitheads. sense that for as great as fucking developers no one's finishing them. But why is that? Why yep. is it that amazing Because they're just games like filler. Doom, Most of it's filler. Theft Auto, The Witcher, and Fallout New filler. Vegas have so many people completing the first mission, but only a handful of survivors left at the end yep. to see the Because it's frankly fall. boring. Well, it was boring. First of all, people are now, racist. I beat Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas five or ten times each. I think San Andreas we beat like 50 times.
we'd have done the ambulance by the by, by the th- third or fourth month that oh, San Andreas geez, was out. It. And by doing the ambulance, I mean like clearing the ambulance so you can have infinite run speed, right? Or not infinite run, but infinite stamina. And uh, we do that right off the bat. And that was like four months into San Andreas. I didn't even buy a Grand Theft Auto V because I knew, I knew it was going to be boring. Uh, like until 2020. Or no, it was it was like 2022 when I finally bought a version of it that I immediately could not use because some Russian had hacked my my Rockstar Games account, and now I'm locked out of it. And they're sending all the reset emails to the Russian instead of me, which makes which makes Rockstar to me a worthless company, kind of. No one finishes anything. I, I wonder if they're very aware of this in this in the Sony leak. Um, the Russians stole all that Sony information and they got all of our Grand Theft Auto passwords because often your Grand Theft Auto password is the same thing as your Sony PlayStation password, right? So they got they got my fucking, they got my Rockstar account and it's not like I care about that. There's only like 20 hours on it or something or 30, I think it is, 50, something like that. But what I do care about is, is I can't ever buy another Rockstar game again because I have to sign up for Social Club each time I do their, their shitty game. And this means that I can't get the confirmation email to be able to even play the game. And 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 and, and, and this is already is what's happening with Grand Theft Auto Five. I can't I can't imagine what's going to happen with Grand Theft Auto Six. So guess what? If I want to play Grand Theft Auto Five or Grand Theft Auto Six, I have to go to the Epic Game Store and buy it all over again and start all over again. And I'm going to do that, but I'm not happy about that. And the only thing I want in Grand Theft Auto Five is the submarine. I couldn't give a shit about anything else in the game anymore. The combat's worthless. It's all auto lock. It's not really a great game, not in my opinion. It's it's definitely it definitely was in the early aughts you know and early like teens and stuff but it w- by by 2015 i don't think i don't think grand theft auto is it should it, i don't think grand theft auto should be the driving force that it is the games did not evolve really but i also think part of the reason for this might be the fact that like i would say there is no difference between san andreas and grand theft auto 5 Autopilot i don't think there jumping. is there is no difference except graphics. That is it. There's the, the engines are the same. Graphics are much, much better. Frame rates much, much better. But everything in San Andreas is exactly what's in Grand, in Grand Theft Auto V. There's a lot more in Grand Theft Auto V in terms of content because they were selling it as a live service. But I mean, yeah, they're very different games. But I mean, as ter- in terms of evolution, there is no difference. There is no functional difference between San Andreas released in 2004 or whatever it was. Lord deliver me from 2004. Uh, and uh, and, t- and 2015 when, when, when Grand Theft Auto V came out, the games are the same. There's no, even the music sometimes sounds the same. It, they're the exact same fucking game. They're like the exact same game, same engine, same premise, same stuff, same stories, same stuff. And while they, five is a much more technically amazing game because it was like the advent of AI revolution and they could have all this AI stuff going on that, that, that San Andreas couldn't, right? But I mean, overall, that's about the only evolution in Grand Theft Auto was the AI and the fact that RP became such a big thing. But you could, but that the, the RP thing is 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 the community. We have the community to thank thank for that, not Rockstar. And the same is true with Starfield. Starfield was the exact same game that Fallout seventy six was. There's no difference. Um, no difference at all. Same exact game. Even the graphics really are pretty much the same thing. A little bit better in Starfield, but not much. And, um, oh, well, definitely better. Um, and they keep selling us the same game and they keep wasting our time when we do buy their game. And I find this disrespectful and I yell at them all the time and I call them nasty, nasty things like piece of shit developer. And I actually mean it piece of shit developer you waste our time like like you want to know why i mean it is because when you add up the the billions of man hours that you waste every year with with filler and video games it kind of is war crime level i kind of hate you like i hate hitler it's like up there with war crime level of travesties it's like the amount of billions of hours your bad gameplay and design costs us every year if you think about the 3.5 billion gamers on the planet and all the wasted time that we spend on filler and bullshit and and missions and stuff that, that that just doesn't need to be there and i put you up there on war crime levels of 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 of, of irresponsibleness because the man hours actually matter 
that time that you wasted that shit matters people don't have that time a hundred years is a very finite time for a human to live they don't have the time to do dailies and yet you you put you put profit and growth based around dailies for five years in world of warcraft and you shouldn't have done that because it was like terrible 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 t like wait like like will willing loss of time and that is not acceptable anymore. We've grown wiser. You you cannot waste our time on purpose anymore. I, I believe there should be a law against it because it harms children really badly. If you look at how much time children probably spend queuing up for Fortnite matches, it's going to it's going to be up in the billions of hours every year. Billions. You understand? In just queuing up for matches. Now, that's not epic's fault that it takes time to load the island it's not but when you think about how much work that how much time that actually is just queuing up over and over and over and over it's disrespectful for their time you should have just made the island where you can pop at a new spawn point right or something like that you should i don't know what it i don't know what you could do to fix this but i know that you're wasting a lot of time and it feels really dirty to me the way that rape and child molestation and you know murder and dirty 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 business does that law that willing loss of time that you cost us in busy work every year i think it is almost on the level of war crime level of irresponsibleness it, it has huge huge costs and i think you should be taken to task for it or at least i think the, the there should be a, like an fcc or an over site committee that comes in and penalizes you legally and with fines and stuff if you willfully waste billions of hours of our time every year you know and i would say there's a lot of this is based around that the games just aren't respecting our time they are rather no. they're wasting every precious second now this is like yeah. a podcast essentially he, he's got like the gameplay going on in the background but it's all halo bullshit that i don't care about so i'm not even going to put this video on the screen because none of the none of the visual stuff that he's doing relates to the subject matter this is like a podcast delivery it, only his voice matters in this so that's why you don't see this video on the screen right now none of the stuff he's showing matters it's not just the developers. It's like a slideshow of games that he's not even playing. As easy as a scapegoat as that seems to be nowadays. Here's a recent comment I made on X about time. Now here is something. Here's something that, something he, that, that he is gonna uh, that he is gonna talk about. And these are these are rookie numbers to me. You gotta get those. You gotta start jacking off at work. These are rookie numbers. If you think a hundred hours is a lot, you are a rookie backlash but also shed some light 100 hours is not a lot it's not a lot in video games it's not most games if they're good if you really want to explore the flesh and bone of a video game almost all games even super mario brothers can can cost you 100 hours i definitely played super mario world for at least a thousand hours is is it a game that i should have played a thousand hours no but because I universally loved the game so much, I would beat it over and over and over and over and over and over again. When I was depressed, I would fire up Super Mario World and it would make me feel better because it's so cheerfully relentless, sorry, so relentlessly cheerful, right? And, and so was Yoshi's Island. So I would just play those games over and over and over again because you just can't be bummed out playing Super Mario Brothers. It's just too positive. It's like it's like playing Pikmin or something. It's, it's just too cute, you know? Unless there's death or something, there's no bad feelings at all. So I was so addicted to Super Mario Brothers when I was like 12 years old. And I definitely clocked a lot more than 100 hours on Super Mario Brothers. And if I can clock 1,000 hours on Super Mario Brothers 3, I think 100 is like rookie numbers. And you're saying that it's really bad when a game takes more than a hundred hours i say no it's really bad when the game doesn't take a hundred hours hey on all of this it's not about the time it's, it's not about, about the time it's, it's not it, like all the time i look at how fast these piece of shit young kids push you press w all gas no break breaks morons on Fortnite and shit like that siege right and they think that they're the best nah man you're on the you're you're the you're the ones that aren't smelling the roses the most you are the ones with the least skill you do not sit sit around and respect the developer by getting really truly into it i don't think i think you're there to push and then wait for the next popcorn game to pop and that kind of culture is really damaging the video games and it comes straight out of call of fucking duty with two o's instead of a u about how amazing every second of that time is Seven comes straight out of activision blizzard game. right and goddamn like 
system is perfectly fine if those five hours are sublime. Yep, it's perfectly if fine. Yep, if you really enjoyed the hundred hours, ratio. it's okay that a game took a hundred hours. It's actually okay. So your time it's like reading a about. really good novel that you can't put down, but you don't have the time to read. Maybe you're reading Moby Dick and it takes you five months because you're not always reading every day. You know, and you go to bed at night. You're like, I should finish Moby Dick. So you, you get a couple more pages and you fall asleep and stuff. Does that make Moby Dick bad because it's long? No. 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 Not at all. Valuable to you in the first place. Go work hard until it is. Maybe because some people see, read Moby Dick in, in a gripping 19 hours, you know, way back in the day when a, a, a whale story actually really, like, put butts in the seats, you know? And maybe maybe uh, they pick up Moby Dick and they expected it to take three months, or like, like most of the other books that they read, but instead they finish Moby Dick in 19 hours and they just keep reading. And they're like, oh, my God, the whale is so terrifying. It's like, you know, books used to be television, you know? Books literally used to be television up until... 1987 something like that books were essentially television you know like you would go to bed at night you would read a book you wouldn't uh, i mean yeah by by 1987 we were going to bed to television but i mean usually it was a book books were television for the last million years or something so like yeah so so but does it you know so user mileage may vary some some people are going to read moby dick the first time they read moby dick in 19 hours some people are going to take five years you know and does that make Moby Dick bad because it's long? No. And and did, 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 does the person's experience um, differ in terms of their value of it just because one took longer or one enjoyed it more and and, 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 and thoroughly read every word and really imagined every scene and, and painted it all in their head and stuff, you know, uh, instead of just skimming kind of thing? No, it, it, people's mileage is always equal, pretty much, you know? When it comes to media, it shouldn't be about nothing more than the length of time they manage to confine yeah. us in front of a screen. And I think it's, it's sad that they think that hours are pertinent to somebody's skill level, because I know plenty of fucking people, myself included, that have 5,000 hours in games like Rust just because I'm a severe goddamn video game addict. I have 5,000 hours on fucking everything. Rust isn't the only one. I've got 5,000 hours on WoW. I've got 5,000 hours on Final Fantasy 14. I've got 5,000 hours on Final Fantasy 11. I've got 5,000 hours. I'm close. I'm, I'm coming in on Eve. Like on Eve, I'm, I'm fast coming up on 5,000 hours on Eve. It's, it's, it's going up faster, not, not slower. Right now, I'm... I, okay, two years ago, I was at like only only at like 60 hours on the eve version of i'm sorry on the uh, steam version of eve because i played on on ccp's launcher version like wow has a launcher ccp did the original launcher and then wow copied it and so i've been playing the ccp launcher since 2010 but i only started steam in 2021 or 2022 something like that and so like it says that i have only 4,000 hours in eve but i mean I, I i had 5,000. i mean i'm up at 10 or something on eve I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm up at 10. I've, I've sat mining all day, so many days in my life, you know? And like, and, and so does this make Eve inherently bad because it was long? No. It's modern day gamers propensity to- Does it make a short game bad because it doesn't promise us 30 hours? Absolutely the fuck not. No. Some of the best games I ever played were like 45 minutes long. <laughs> Believe it or not, rely on this metric so heavily, along with many. Look other at Spelunky. Issues. Spelunky doesn't last for more than forty-five minutes most times, unless you're a Spelunky addict, right? Spelunky doesn't last more than thirteen minutes or something like that. But I fucking love Spelunky too. I think it's one of the greatest games ever made. It was like it was like the evolution of Super Mario Brothers three. Essentially, it was it was so fucking good. It was like so good. It was such a breakout, fucking wonderful game in every way and form. I love Spelunky too. That's a perfect ten up there with Tetris right no problems no frame rate losses no bugs ever no complaints ever essentially spelunky 2 is like a fucking technically perfect game there's no issues with it there's no bugs or anything is i'm sure there's bugs but they're not, they're not they're not major and like i love spelunky 2 like i love pussy money and weed you know what i'm saying and i don't mean to be sexist i just love those things i do um and i like little wayne too uh and um i'm just saying that that like you know and but does is spelunky 2 inherently bad because the average run only takes 13 minutes or whatever no
certain trends propagate. Mileage may vary, but value does not. If the game's good, it doesn't matter whether you spend 5,000 hours on it or not. A lot of people would say that World of Warcraft is a bad game, but I've spent 25,000 hours or something on it. Or, or something like to that kid on it. I know because I can pull my... On my Hunter, there's 1,900 days or something. You know? 1,900 days. I mean, what is that? I don't know. It's like 25 or 30,000 hours. I don't want to do the math on it. ...from this that have diluted the core of what it is we should achieve with this... Now, was I AFK for a third, at least a quarter to a third, if not half of that? Absolutely the fuck yes. Is is that a bad part about the game? Yeah, I kind of spent a lot of time AFK in games because I'm constantly distracted. ...medium in the first place. So, like, you know, also, you might spend 100 hours on Elden Ring. and you. you know, I had a friend who beat Elden Ring in, well, I don't know, 50 hours 60 hours something like that he was a very talented person he's one of the best rust players that i ever met too and he was just better than me the shout out to dino nuggets he, he, he's he's st i still consider him a friend although I, I mean we didn't really have a falling out no i consider him a friend he's a good guy uh shout out to dino nuggets and 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 i will say that or dino whatever dino um and i will say that um there is a truly talented gamer that takes to it like a fish like water i had to i had to adopt this stuff i, I have many talents across many different fucking like you know many different uh, venues and stuff. I have many, th many, many thumbs and many pies, you know, but where I, I, I don't, I, where I would say I am, I am not strong is I am a master. I'm a jack of all trades, but I am a master at none. He's a master of one. And he, and he picks one and he masters it. I am a, I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I play all the games and I play them at an average level. I would say, I would say I've never been an amazing gamer. I can crank nineties every once in a while, like any other gamer, but I don't do it consistently and I don't care to, you know what I'm saying? I don't care to be that stressed out about it. So I am not Ninja and I'm proud that I'm not Ninja. So mileage might vary, right? That kid who beats Elden Ring in 60 hours, he was much better at the game than me. Even though I had played all previous seven versions of the Souls and beat them all like 10 times, including Bloodborne, right? He was a better Elden Ring player in his first 60 hours than I was in all seven of the game, in all seven of the other Souls-like games, or however many there's been. I think there's been like five or six or seven, something like that, I think. Kingsfield, if you include the Kingsfield, it's like eight or nine. Uh... And so I have 25 years as a Souls-like player or something. Since since King's Field of the PlayStation 1 era, I have been a Souls-like player, right? But this kid from the new generation comes in with, with 125th of the, of, the, of the experience and slaughters me, right? And I am not ashamed of this. I am not sad because of it. I am not, I am not like, oh, I suck at video games because this kid is better than me or any of that shit. No, the difference is he chooses to master one game when he plays one game. When I'm playing Elden Ring, I'm thinking thinking about pussy money and weed right now i'm thinking about pussy money and weed right now while i talk to you about Elden ring i was thinking about pussy money and weed you know what i'm saying there's a difference <laughs> you know so like so like i just don't have the focus to sit there and be that that superstar in 60 hours on Elden ring and beat the game before before the kid who has 25 years and souls like souls likes experiences does because the souls like guy can't focus i cannot focus i've got too many games in my head i don't care i'm playing 15 games of chess at once i don't give a shit about beating bobby fisher or or deep blue versus kasparov i'm playing 15 games at once just because i love the game of chess so much you understand i don't give two shits about winning one game of chess I or or winning one one video game. I'm playing 15 games. You know what so I'm saying? Today, I want to talk about why modern games are wasting so much of our. Why time are they wasting so much of our time? And it's weird because it's it's a hard thing to nail this down. Some of it is mileage. Mileage may vary. Some of it is like some people smell the roses. Some people don't. Some people don't give two shits about a story like me. I have the, the I have the, this wonderful story. This is a wonderful story. It, it got awards for its story, uh, Horizon Forbidden West. But I can't keep the voices on because the because the voices are a name they break the immersion for me it, it breaks the experience for me i don't i don't give two shits about the story i don't want to waste the time i skip through it and i cut all the cutscenes now and i'm going to continue to do this with all with all future single player games unless they step on a disco elysium step of of like of actual only story right i'll, I'll pay attention to a story game if it's like well story is my main my major export my major import right or whatever you know, my, ma my major product story is the only thing i bring like disco elysium right they didn't bring combat they didn't bring graphics they didn't bring they did bring music and story and that was good enough i still believe disco elysium to be the greatest game ever made as the rest of the community does as well so you know and i mean this it's at the top of the metacritic of all time disco elysium and it should be because it had the best music and it had the best story 
Now, d do I go looking for story in these single one player games where I figure archery is the main goal? No. I skipped the story. I couldn't give two shits anymore. I've seen 25 years of video game stories and only one of them has ever impressed me. So I, th I think you could fairly say that out of the 40,000 games that I played, all the Final Fantasies, all the JRPGs, even those, I don't care. I still don't think the stories were remotely good. They're like manga stories to me that, that aren't engaging to me. And they're not even good like Akira, you know? Or, or or neon genesis most of the time i would say final fantasy 7 was 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 the quality of a inuyasha it was not the quality of a neon genesis you understand it was it was a bit more of a commercial quality quantity quantity game than that we want to give it credit for it was a little bit more of a process game and so i love final fantasy 7 but i don't consider it to be a perfect game like a lot of the other people do it, i mean it is a perfect game kind of but it's it's you know, it is what it is. So now I'm like, I don't look for stories in games. And so, and, and now if they want to sell a story, they've got to sell a story game. Otherwise I don't want to waste my time with it. And so I don't know why you waste my time with this story. Now, how the developer thinks of it is kind of funny. I think they think that we can just skip through it if we want to, but they don't say this. They don't, they don't push it at you. They don't say, they don't say to kids who are just picking up video games at the age of 12 that you're going to probably experience about 25, 50, 75 years of video game stories in your life. And yeah, 99.99999% of them are garbage because most games just provide combat. You know, most games are about combat. Uh, we got to be honest with ourselves. So, yeah. And so it's nice when they try to include a story like Skyrim. And, and I enjoyed the Skyrim story. But I don't need it. And I consider it to be a waste of time, frankly. If I wanted a good story. And I mean this, guys. Read a book, right? Right now, I'm reading. <sighs> I'm like 15 pages in to. And this is my. This is like one of my prized possessions, The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. You know what I'm saying? Now, this book is better than all of the video game stories combined, including Disco Elysium. All of them. Every game ever created, if you were to combine all the stories, all the value from all the stories, this book is far more entertaining. It is. I'm terribly sorry. It just is. It has more weight on the real world. It has more to do with social mores and, and what, what it's like to grow up in a small town and be a small and, and to experience a casual vacancy on a uh, on a uh, on a on a on a on a city council and, and have like a, a local murder mystery and all this stuff, right? It is just far, far, far more entertaining than all all of the video game stories combined and i don't know why the developers and the fucking gamers pr like blather on all my life about video game stories to me they're worthless essentially and i mean this it's i know how insulting this is to video game writers but i have not i'm beyond disco i can't think of a story that i can remember out of the tens of thousands of games i've beaten the, the stories are not impressive to me they don't have weight like akira you know or i mean i'm using akira because i know a lot of people watch anime but another better example would be say gladiator you know there's no video game that even has one tenth of the quality of story of the movie gladiator you understand so stop asking for story stop looking for it stop making them do it and when they do do it let us skip it because they, honestly these are not these are th this is not hemingway these video game developers are not hemingway I'm sorry, they are not. Fix it. Even Disco is not Hemingway. It is an amalgamation of a bunch of cool little ideas and, 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 and little vignettes and stuff of what it would be like to be a detective in a small town like that on the Insulindian ins ins uh, Peninsula and all that. And it was wonderful. I love Disco. I want to play it right now, maybe. I might play Disco. To, you know, brings tears to my eyes how wonderful Disco is. But honestly, this, this trashy uh you know second tier uh jk rowling novel is ten hundred maybe a thousand times more entertaining to me than disco elysium which is the best story game of all time now could they get better yes they could get better uh but they're the stories are pulpy they're often violent unnecessarily violent uh you know all this other stuff and they all want to be blood meridian they're they're not they are not Cormac McCarthy. They don't tell a really fucking 
poignant story. None of these games do, not even Disco. So stop talking about story in games. Stop worrying about it so much. I don't think uh, I don't think we came to video games looking for a story. Now, what I do want is movie quality games that play like a movie, but you have interaction, right? And you can choose the good side or the bad side in the Transformers War or something, and you can see it from both sides of the conflict, right? I think there's a huge, huge, huge future in 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 uh, video game movies and in, in movie vi- movie video games, right? huge huge future and i expect to see the good stories told there right i do not expect them to be told in the current uh uh, in the current uh uh entire lexicon of video game stories there's like five memorable ones and they aren't very good i'm terribly sorry and what better way to start and so that's one of the ways that you're really 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 not only misappropriating funds but also like you know like 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 engaging in bad bad design like like we don't want or need most times we don't want or need a story now when i buy a game like Baldur's gate 3 I expect a story because I believe Baldur's Gate 3 lives by its story. And it was a good story, but it was not memorable to me in any way or form. Now, that's my fault, probably. I've got brain... I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, T- uh, uh, I have, I'm TBI, which is traumatic brain injury, right? I didn't even know there was a phrase for it, but there is. I'm TBI, and that probably falls on me. I've got brain damage, and so it's hard for me to care about this stuff, right? But I mean, like, I don't, I don't know. If you were to take the time that you worried about the Skyrim story, it just made Skyrim's combat good and the world more engaging and more uh, immersive, I think Skyrim would have done better than it, than it, than it currently had done. You could have kept that fucking, like, honestly, you didn't need to do all the Jarls talking and blathering on in their fucking chambers about some, some, uh, you know, some, uh, Stormcloak Rebellion or whatever. You, you didn't need that. You needed to sell the Stormcloak Rebellion, which you didn't do. It was boring. On this explanation. Then you what- needed to make it feel like when you exited Whiterun, you might be engaged in a conflict between the Imperials and you might get caught up in a conflict between the Imperials and the Stormcloaks and it might cost you as a player. You did not sell the sides of Skyrim that needed to, to be sold. You focus on a worthless story that I don't really value and, and I felt this way about Oblivion. Now it had a lot of cool lore. Oblivion was a, was a different era where I think it had a better story. It definitely did. I like the story in Oblivion a lot more than I do Skyrim, right? But I still don't care i don't care about the story of morrowind or oblivion most of the time you are selling gameplay and it's and it's a tragic tragic thing that video game writing is not 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 where it should be and, and maybe we can throw some money at that and try and fix it or something but you keep trying to base all these games off stories that are to me not even the value of a saturday morning cartoon Honestly, I've had Batman, the animated series, bring me to tears a lot more times than all of the video game stories combined. And I, I feel that a Saturday morning cartoon could have more, like, fucking story weight than video games right now or in the last 50 years. And I think you guys need to address this. Those stories, they aren't necessary. And I'm not saying kill all stories in video games. That would be horrible. I'm saying the, the companies that, that make games that are based around story need to do better because their games aren't that interesting. And the companies that try to include a story when all they really have is a combat engine, like this game, they need to stay away from it. Like, I would say the horizon kind of hurt itself with the constant blather. And so I turned off the voices, I skip all the cutscenes, and I try to get through the bad sides of the game. And that's unfortunate because it does a lot of discredit to the people who spent their blood, you know, blood, sweat, and tears making this. And that is not smelling the roses. That's acting like those kids who turn and burn games and, and want to play Madden 24 and Madden 25 and Call of Duty 24 and Call of Duty 25. Me not valuing the stories in the video games is just as harmful as the turn and burn culture. But I mean, I can't help it. I I don't value these stories. They have not ever been engaging to me. They are not interesting. One of the biggest Disco Elysium had me wrapped in attention in its character exposition and character development, but the story wasn't very memorable. Harry Dubois goes to town. A lot of weird stuff happens depending on what your personality is. You back the labor dispute. I'm sorry. You back the rich people or you back the labor party 
and depending on which one you back helps you solve the murder in a different way and it was canonically perfect and a really beautiful game perfect 10 but the story isn't very memorable you understand and this is something that disco elysium did understand and they they they, they, they did a lot of exposition they got you really involved in the story they really did but they knew that a video game story still doesn't really carry water. It isn't It isn't a product that's ever been very good. And I'm not sure it ever could be unless you make movie games, you know. So you got to tone it down on the fucking story. And I know that sounds really bad. But honestly, this lore, I couldn't give two shits about this. Now, I, I will say this. I have a one of my best friends in my inner circle. Shout out to T. Uh, who is also uh, on, on disability uh, with the government for Asperger's. Um, but he has been all his life since he was like born. Um, he is a wonderful man. I love him to death. One time I was on the streets on heroin and he just handed me $600 cash out of the goodness of his heart to just pay the deposit on a, on a rental and just get off the streets with my girlfriend. He was like, I love you, dude. And I don't want to see you on the streets. So here's $600. If you prom if you, if you show me the receipt, I will pay for your, for your, for your uh, deposit on the rental and I'll even get you the rental too. And he did. And we used that opportunity to do heroin and break the friendship and destroy him, just destroy the friendship. And that's what drugs do. You know, I would say, I think he'll forgive me, but I have to go back and repair the friendship. And I never harmed him in it. Well, I harmed him. I owe him the $600, but I've not had $600 that I could hand anybody since then. You know, I still don't have it. Not really. So, uh, and, and why I bring this up is my friend T is a devout, lore person he knows more about mortal Kombat than tobias and boone do he knows more about street fighter than whoever made street fighter can't remember the name uh capcom guy uh he i mean this is a lore master and and i mean it he knows every single plot point of every single fucking mortal Kombat uh uh fucking um you know uh figurine every character every every movie every television show he's seen all of it he owns all of it every time they sell a mortal Kombat game he stands at the, in the store at the GameStop at midnight and he waits for mortal Kombat 11 and stuff he's a mortal Kombat fiend and i can't think of a story that is less engaging than a fighting game story you know i just couldn't give two shits about the street fighter story or the or the mortal Kombat story but my friend t does so I'm, I'm now going to argue out of the other side of my mouth. There is obviously people who really, 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 really value these, value these stories, which is why I think they do them. And I would say you waste a lot of our time with it, but I do love that you are trying to reach us, that you are trying to give us what we want. I do love that you're trying to make a star Wars, um, you know, appreciation of, Final Fantasy 7, whatever, you know, whatever. Kids need Star Wars, you know, they need new stuff like that. So whatever, sell their, sell the Final Fantasy 7 if you want to. That's okay, you know. I'm not a hater for 7 Remake. I'm a hater that 7 Remake isn't fun to play, you know. 7 Remake is not fun to play. It's a fan. New World's like 10 times more fun than 7 Remake. This game's 10 times more fun than 7 Remake. There's out there. Sorry. Open worlds. I'll never forget the first time. For one I thing, you can aim. The freezing cold valley of White <laughs> I mean, you can Skyward. aim in seven remake, but not really. Not really. Me. Or as a kid, <clears throat> when I left the sewers under the capital of Oblivion and was met with the roaring sound. Yeah. Now notice. Now made. notice. He doesn't talk about the Emperor's story and the the Amulet of Kings or any of that stupid bullshit story that I honestly just don't care about. He is talking about how revolutionary of an experience it was for him to exit the the, the Oblivion sewer or the Tindrum sewers or the or the fucking you know the the fucking uh the uh the Helgen sewers right it's just you know or the the, the Helgen cave it, it it's uh you know it, it was it was revolutionary and, and notice he's not talking about story at all 
So I'm saying you don't you don't need to cut the story out. They like the lore, but you also don't need to put all that money and time into it and waste my time with it as much. I think. Like for instance, when I look at Bespoken, Bespoken, I see a story that just didn't need to be there. It's weird because I think if they had just worried about the combat engine and turned in a really fucking solid combat game like Hi-Fi Rush, I don't care about the story in Hi-Fi Rush, but boy, Hi-Fi Rush was fun to play, you know. And I'm sure Bespoken is fun to play, but why did you put that worthless piece of shit triple a story in it that just tanked it why why do you bother i don't think that i don't feel that, that, that these games need a story like that now it's weird i want you to include the lore i want you to t i want you to show me the lore i don't want you to tell me the lore you know i want you to show me the lore like timothy kane say mountain ranges before me these i don't think timothy kane valued any of the stories that he told in, in many of the rpgs that he did he probably does value the stories and he worked on it a lot but i i guarantee he probably doesn't value the story of oblivion the way he values the story of say what's an excellent novel right war and peace He'll value War and Peace more. It tells a better story. You know? Oblivion's got a good story, but it's not one that I remember. You know? Experiences define and you waste our time with this. A, lo a lot of it. Did, like, honestly, I would I would feel better if you didn't say that the Amulet of Kings has been stolen. I just want to see what the effects uh, that has on the people. I don't need you to tell me that the Amulet of Kings has been stolen. I guess maybe in the first, like, five, ten minutes you can do that. But beyond that, I want you to show me people running around hunting for the amulet. I want you to have people come up to you and be like, do you have the amulet? You know, I, I, I think show me, show me is a lot better than tell me find my love for games growing up and eventually cascaded into me making videos nowadays ah That's because when an open world is done right why do you do this so shit this is wasting my time on purpose for no reason why do you do that stupid shit of it all so much the one shots so and the bullet sponge is so disrespectful waste our time so much i hate you so much over the bullet sponge and one shot to me you're worthless i'd be okay if every single video game company out there that does bullet 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 sponge and one shot went bankrupt today i'd be okay with it i'd be like tee -hee. oh good the bullet sponge one shot or bullshit pieces of shit piece of shit developers all got fired today and i would dance in the streets and i would i would take some joy in, in in the loss of your job because the one shot in the bullet sponge has poisoned the well it has turned most of these games into garbage and i i, I love this industry like i like pussy money and weed and i don't want you fucking it up and you're fucking it up with that piece of sh with, with all that piece of shit exposition story you you, you do all the time Every game's got some piece of shit story that I don't care about. I'm sorry. Like, like honestly, I care more about the Dark Souls 1 story. Is there is there a Dark Souls 1 story? Than Final Fantasy 7. This is a wake up for you guys. I know you don't think it's like that, but it is. I felt that the Dark Souls had a better story than Final Fantasy 7. And I don't even know what the story is. You understand? And the, 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 you keep you keep hiring all these people and paying all this money and making this giant cantankerous fucking story like Final Fantasy X that I just don't care about. I don't care about sin. I, I'm sorry, I don't don't care about sin. That has swept this industry. Never did, never will. I'll kill him. Yeah, because I'm gonna kill everybody. This is a Final Fantasy game, but honestly, you could call him X Death and you could leave it as vague as that, and I'd be fine of late we're instead of focusing he did so much exposition on sin I, I, I don't give two shits about sin he's going down just like all the other ruby weapons and all that shit i don't care about what his backstory is i'm sorry now some of these people do and more power to them but i don't and i and i, I do i do not believe i am alone i believe i i believe that the majority of the community feels as i do that these stories aren't aren't, aren't too good and really shouldn't be like you know the, the 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 core of the game the the combat and the gameplay and the and the op optimization the frame rate and 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 the uh the execution should be not 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 some piece of shit story that you've got to make the entire game conform around you know just do a premise and let the game show the story do not tell me that the amulet kings have stolen has been stolen show me on quality we are stuck thinking about <laughs> quantity because the thing yep. is i don't it's think quantity. most developers yep. are making open worlds because it actually is making games better in fact for the large nope. majority of cases if anything 
it makes them much, much worse. worse. Structured yeah. and meaningful missions with direct narratives are substituted instead for soulless and meandering side and fetch quests that serve no purpose but to give you something to do. Hyper-detailed and fascinating environments full of lore are traded in for boring oh, sections of walking across digitized rocks with I'm no sorry. environmental storytelling to boot. And at every turn, beautiful, thought-provoking game design is given up on in favor of incoherent mechanics that are all made with the single intention of padding game time. When you have worlds and universes that are so large in scope, they also put a greater demand on the narrative and design teams. And you know, I'll never understand how people will play such a short game like Journey or Titanfall and absolutely love it, but- Flower, really Flower is almost my favorite game and, and that game is like an hour long. Yeah, it takes like maybe an hour to complete the whole game. And I still think Flower is one of the greatest games ever made. It, it, it's got a better story than Final Fantasy VII. Less is more sometimes. Fund it because it only lasted them a couple of hours, yet spend hundreds of hours in a game like Assassin's Creed or Far Cry only to complain about how they didn't like any of it. Just because a game is longer doesn't mean it's more worth your money or your time. And in fact, I would argue that in most cases, a shorter game is actually better. Take for example a beloved title like Elden Ring, one of the best releases of the past decade and a game that quite literally made FromSoft a household name and juggernaut in the industry. For as much as I adore Elden Ring, for as amazing as so many of the bosses and environments are, the game is just too long. Like it's I mean, long. seriously, yeah, it's too I can't long. tell I don't you the amount of people again. I know personally that love the game, but when it they got to the snowy it. mountaintops in the north and yeah, realized, and just they had realized that it's over, I don't want to do it again. Entire normal game's worth of playtime left to finish, they just bailed. And that's not yeah. because the game was too long inherently, but because no. it didn't justify its length. The narrative itself lost so much pacing and intensity because of the fact that it took so long to do I don't anything. want to explore that and Because room. the stakes didn't seem to grow exponentially with time, long stretches felt slow and less interesting than they could It won't be fun. Been. I'm not going to do and it. when you keep seeing the same bosses over and over again for many dungeons all over the world, for instance, you eventually start to ask yourself the question, why? Why did we need another dungeon with the scary cat statue thing at the end for me to kill? Why are the interiors to all of the side dungeons exactly the same? Why is the underground zone I discovered in the woods the exact same one that I discovered under a library? Because even when things like this are offset by rewards that vary and allow new character builds or new sets of lore to untangle, it still gives off a weird impression that the developers behind the game simply don't respect our time. When I was playing Elden Ring, my emotions were always a mixture of pure bliss from finding- Or rage. I, I felt really conflicted with Elden Ring because there was a lot of things about the game that made me really fucking angry. Like how, how annoyingly stupid the bosses were. And I, I and so I, I really, I took a party to every boss in that game. I did not want to fight the bosses. I did not, I did not think they were fun. I just didn't. The fire giant was kind of fun. That was about it. That was the only boss I actually enjoyed. And, and I really hated it because I just got one shot over and over and over again. And finally, I realized that if you don't put vigor in, you're, you're just going to get one shot by the entire game. And so when I did that, I, I, I would, it was easy. The game was easy. I beat it. It was, you know, I beat a co-op, but I mean, it was, I, I could have done a solo. Any new places. I, I, I have a new character on Elden Ring um, That that's a caster. And I do want to do some Elden Ring magic. But I don't know. It's lacking something. Like, I think it needs a summon or a, like, a pet class thing to the caster side of it. And I don't think it has. It has a very good magic system. Really super good. But I wouldn't say that it has, like, a, you know, like a memorable magic system, though. Which is kind of annoying. Is or vanquishing new and so I came back to my, my, my uh, I'm one and a half ways through on my initial character. I'm on, on my one and a half ways through the game. I'm, I'm halfway through the second playthrough. And on my second character, I'm like 10 hours in or something like that. And I'm, I'm to Godfrey or something like that, I think. And like, I want to play that game again, but I just know, I know how much walking it is. I know, I know how long it's going to take. And I, I want to see that magic system at its core. I want to see every spell and what they do. But I know that that will take so much time 
right on stream too that i just bailed out of that idea and i I'd had that idea for like three years and i had to give up on that one because it was just pointlessly long is in frustration of finding so many copy pasted enemies and yeah areas, there was there was a lot of one in the same about it that didn't feel uh souls like there was a like like like, like i loved i fucking loved the pack of zombies like the thing he's looking at right and there's this happened several times in the game there's just a huge horde of zombies and i really loved it when i first saw it but then by by the hundredth hour i was like it, it seems sort of one in the same a little bit and, and when you think about it going through the whole pack of zombies only takes like five seconds or something so it doesn't really actually comprise actual i think design it was just a good little cheap ploy to keep us entertained it wasn't like like it, they could have done a lot of really cool things about roving packs of zombies but they only did it like two or three times in the game i think and, and they really should have i think and they could have made that such a cool mechanic like make the world like full of full, full of hordes of zombies and stuff that are easy to kill but there's just a lot of them and if you stand there, they're going to kill you, right? Because there's like 40 zombies all hitting you at once, which is enough to kill you instantly. But I mean, like, and, and, and it was like that when you, when you first encounter the zombie horde down south in the, or up, I'm sorry, up north in the, in, in, in the lava area or the fire area. Uh, you see this huge pack of zombies in the undead land and you're like oh my god and you go you go through them in five seconds it's easy to kill them all and i was like why not do this throughout the entire game it would have made the game so much more memorable but they but they it's weird it seems like they're they're out to, to make a cheap ploy that's gonna sell rather than expounding on it and turning the game into something a little bit more special it, had there been roving packs of hordes of zombies that all die to one shots you know because they're crappy little zombies that only take one hit to kill i think the game would have been a, fa a lot more interesting to me but you know but they don't do that because the whole thing was just some ploy to get you to spend an extra 20 minutes killing a pack of zombies i think it wasn't about like making the game better it was about spending our time you know of such breathtaking scale and while i spent over 100 hours with the game at least 25 of those were doing 27,000 gil excited or interested yeah rather just random places on the map i figured yeah. I should go to since they're there and I wanted to cross them off a list. Why was an entire 25 hours, almost one fourth of my full time? Another 35,000. See, all the payouts, so guys. Look I at it. Well, it's it's 100,000 gil. Nowadays, of trying to make games so long, yeah. it's actually just making Fuck them yeah. spend more time wasting ours. I personally think Elden Ring would have been much better if they instead reduced the amount of content they yep, had by they 20 had by like twenty or thirty percent and just made what they had a lot fucking better. You know, if this is true of all these games. Like for instance, uh, Horizon has a lot of filler, a lot of it, and while I don't mind it. I don't think it's conductive to what the game's actually delivering. Like, if you think about it, look at this beautiful vista with all these graphics and a whole wide land. And I can I can glide down like Fortnite if I want. I can get in a fight with them if I want. It, it, like, that is what the game is selling. But, I mean, and, and it's successfully doing so. And I love this. Look at this beautiful vista. Even in 12 set, 1280 by 720 and low graphics because I'm running five clients at once, um, it still looks really fucking good to me, even though it's sort of washed out and pixelated, right? It still looks really fucking good to me. And, and this is their primary product that they're selling. But they poisoned the well by adding in all these pointless stories and all this busy fetch work and stuff. If the, I don't know what it is. And, and honestly, I wish they would get the one-shots out of here and make the combat so so addictive that, that that i can't pass up killing these things but because the one shot is so oppressive i'm not going to make this poll and these are the most basic mobs in the game i don't want to make this poll though because i know that the one shot is so fucking bad that i'm unlikely to win it's like a 50 50 chance that that while i'm firing an arrow something off screen is going to one shot me like diablo 3 right and I, and, I, and I don't know why the game needs to be like that. You should have just made the combat engaging where it's always a 99% hit. That's okay. But it's never a 100. So, yeah, you die after two hits, which is how combat would be. Most combat, if you take a sword strike, you might live, but you're, you're, you're down. You're on the way to the hospital. You're running from the scene, and you're going to try probably, probably try not to bleed to death. By the second sword strike, you're probably dead. The second bullet, you're probably dead right so but not the first one unless it's a headshot 
unless it's a uh, explosion or a uh, fall from a great height or, or something like that, or, or crush syndrome from a giant boulder or something falling on you. Right. It's very seldom one shot. And I need you to get that out of the games. And so all that bullshit about the story that I'm not even listening to, I wish you had just taken those resource resources and actually fixed the combat in extreme. So it's the most addictive third person combat I've ever, ever experienced in it. And it rivals and or tops new world. Right. And it almost, does the combat in this game almost does rival or top new worlds it's actually very fun but where it gets shitty is is throughout the entire game no matter what difficulty level you are on from easy to extreme if you get hit by the mob you're probably dead you know and that's very weird i mean on easy it isn't like that but i mean like normal to to, to extreme if you stand around and get hit you're probably dead and i don't think that is actual combat design or actual combat ai design i believe it is selling a 30-year premise that never worked and letting it just fill your game with dreck and i need you to actually write this ai to be interesting to me and have it not one shot me but definitely hurt me really really bad if i take a hit you know and so yeah second hit i'm okay i'm okay with you killing me i am not okay ever almost not almost ever unless it's an op hitting me in the head with a 50 cal or an explosion going off on my it, like at my feet or a huge piece of metal or stone falling on me or a six or high it's, you know five or five story or higher fall I don't want one shots in the video games. And I consider the main problem with video games being that if you cannot balance the, the difficulty, these games aren't that good. You know, they're not that good. Elden Ring balanced well, I would say. There wasn't a lot of one shots. No, no. There's, there's, I mean, there was, there was a lot of one shots. If you don't have vigor, there is a lot of one shots, but I'm saying it's not like this, where if something touches you, you're just instant dead. Usually it's like when they hit you, it's like a 99% hit and you're down to one health. And I think that's far more, you know, you need to stop doing this one shot shit that makes me so angry. I'm screaming at you and calling you a piece of shit developer right to your fucking face that's on you that is not my fault that i'm doing that that is your fault you you built the, the game around piece of shit one shots that don't reflect anything at all they don't reflect skill they don't reflect skill as a developer it reflects the lack of skill as a developer it reflects a lot of bad things about the developer but it doesn't reflect anything good one shots do not reflect reality they don't reflect you know most times if a fucking if a, if a most times if, if 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 a if a building collapses on you you probably have crust syndrome for five hours until you die you seldom just croak it instantly this, this is this is something really inherently true about life it's very seldom you croak instantly like most of these games do in extreme difficulty or, or even normal sometimes is like that so i want the one shots out of your game i want something more pro more productive and, and less uh disrespectful about my time loss like 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 now now watch me go fight these three things and watch how long it might take to get a successful win against these things because they're shooting me from off screen with one shots they're charging me from off screen with one shots this is what extreme difficulty com is comprised of which is okay but you could do better you could do better from software it does do better you know oh i'm out i'm out of sharp shot ammo which really sucks oh no i'm out of metal shards i'm not out of machine muscle i'm out of metal shards so i will have to go back i'm out of ammo um and i'll have to go back see this busy work i think ammo is busy work a lot of the time a lot of this stupid busy work that i've got to go take care of that honestly is not fun if and, and i have a th i have a piece of paper under my television right now that says do not do anything that isn't fun in a video game or otherwise that is how the rich people got the world to kill itself and i really do believe this i think i think the rich people got the world to kill itself by forcing us to to, to work jobs that we don't like and we don't have fun doing and uh to, to uh, to how to live a life that we don't have fun living and i don't and I don't, I don't really understand that and i think that's what's killing the world right now and so i try not to do anything fun and so i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit the developer with 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 like an existential level of crisis existential crisis level of of uh of, of design flaw that you must address right 
right now if i could i i really don't want to deal with my ammo because i've been dealing with ammo for 30 years and i don't think it's a good mechanic in the in the first fucking place unless you're in a survival situation and this game is not really a survival game it's not really it's an rpg com arpg combat game like new world it's not a survival game not really it's got a lot of survival leanings but it's not a survival game in any way or form so the ammo shouldn't ever fucking matter i don't even know why you fucking put a number on the ammo why do i even have to think about it as a player and that sounds lazy to me like i like i like like i uh, just uh i'm such a lazy player that i don't even want you to have ammo in the games anymore but but the problem is worrying about it isn't fun for me and i believe you are trying to sell fun to me and why would you put something that isn't fun in the game unless it's a survival game like Rust where every shot should matter and the ammo should be counted and the shots in your mag should be counted and all that, right? It's fitting for Rust. It's not fitting for Fortnite. It is not fitting for this game. It's not fitting for Elden Ring. It's not fitting for a lot of games. Ammo is not fitting for a lot of games. It is just some shitty gameplay loop that eats up a lot of bullshit time for no reason. Watch me do it. I have to go buy ammo now. It's so stupid. Why? Why, why would my character ever be so fucking bad at her life or whatever that she doesn't know how to keep arrows in the quiver? I don't know why that has to be me dealing with that. I don't really know. It's like a, it's a, it's a worthless gameplay loop that were based around time sync. And I think Fortnite suffers from it. And I think, I think ammo is an example of, of how you steal time. And I don't think it's good. It, it makes sense in a game like, you know, uh, what's that one ammo game where, where the ammo is super weird and it's like uh, cheap and it's, and it's, and it's used and it's, like like it's homemade uh i own it it's um uh right uh what, what's the game where the ammo is actually really fitting it like it, it's like really deep realism survival games like stalker rust stuff like that i expect to see ammo counters and games like that because it does matter where the fuck did you get the ammo right you're in a survival situation but in Fortnite, i couldn't give two shits about ammo i want 150 for every gun and if i use up the 150 yeah it forced me to get another gun but i could give two shits about the ammo falling i don't know why you wasted so much time animating it i don't i don't give two shits about counting the shots i don't know why why i would ever pick up a sniper rifle without like 10 more without 10 shots included with it and, and it's set of three sniper rifles that don't inherently have a box of ammo like attached to the gun no but i mean in a in a gun situation where you want us to do a lot of, of gun combat really quickly i don't understand why you choke our time sink with yet with ammo i just don't i don't understand it i don't understand why it's necessary for aloy to go get ammo right now and i think some people like that realism but i think it's actually a really bad time sink this is a time sink that i have to go to this campfire right now and buy something that i don't want to do and now i'm going to hit you with the, the final thesis statement of the point that i was trying to make for the developer for their point of view right you need to change and i'll tell you why i would do a lot of things to get out of not coming to buy this ammo i would do a lot of things i would fight the rest of the game without arrows for instance I really don't want to come buy this ammo. It is it is admitting that the that the developer has more control over my life than I it has more it has the developer has more agency over my choices than I do. And I am loath to admit this. I don't like the developer for engaging in this. I call them a piece of shit developer right to their fucking face for doing it. I don't think it's a good mechanic. I don't think it should be in your fucking games. I think it wastes millions of hours for no reason. I think it causes a lot of deaths for no reason i don't think it equals anything when you're good at it i don't think it is a skill level thing i don't i mean in rust it is like in rust you have to produce every shot that you fire so hells yeah the, the ammo is counted right but in fortnite where you fire 290 rounds on average every single match i don't know why you even bother counting the fucking ammo i don't really know you should just include 200 rounds with every gun that you pick up i don't know why it's a thing i don't know why i don't know why it needs to be a thing i don't I don't know why I'm constantly run out of, running out of ammo and cursing you for, for uh, the, the calling you a piece of shit developer right to your fucking face, which is something I don't want to do. I don't want to voluntarily do that. That is biting the hand that feeds. It's 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 ingracious. It's it's me being an ingrate. I am being an ingrate when I am doing so. I am I am biting the hand that feeds, and I'm not being like grateful for the things that you do for me, right? But I mean, I resent the time loss so much. Though that, though that is time that I could be spending on other games. It could be time I could be working. It is time, th this time, where I have to go buy the, these piece of shit arrows that my piece of shit character can't seem to keep in her quiver by herself because the piece of shit developer is using old played out tropes from 1996 instead of evolving. 
and this is happening a lot your story needs to evolve your ammo and your bullshit quantity things need to evolve your loading screens need to evolve and you're not evolving starfield is an example of this all these games are an example of this and so i'm terribly sorry but like a lot of the things that you think make good game design are pretty much the opposite of game design you as developers a lot of the things that you think are necessary in the game are actually pretty much the antithesis of an antithesis of fun or a satisfied customer and if you want to survive as a goddamn video game company you better satisfy the customer instead of punishing us with stupid ass bullshit fucking you know busy work home it's like doing homework or something it's like doing homework i have to go to this npc and i have to sell him things so i can get enough ammo to fight the mobs that are that are going to one shot me you know and there's so many problems and so many barriers between me and fun in that equation that I resent you and I call you, quite rightfully so, a piece of shit developer right to your fucking face. Because the way that you design is kind of piece of shit. It's kind of piece of shit. It's disrespectful for our time. It, it leaves us unsatisfied. You could you could do better. You are not using your brain. You are using your hands. You are you are you. Are, it's, it's like swords to plowshares or something like that, right? You can you can try to pull weeds with your hands all day, or you could go get a plowshare and actually get the the field cut. You're not going to satisfy us with, with with ammo problems and and loading screen problems. You're not gonna. You're we're not gonna remember you fondly if you put us through those things you know so and that's all i have to say about this 40 percent and just really focus this video really this video uh was really good content for my stream and i want to thank you you know i really agree with a lot of what this kid had to say you know th th uh, this th th this video was really good content for my stream and i reacted a lot and I want to thank you. I cited you very clearly and like subbed. Great vid. Got the old brain blood flowing. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Yes, it did. Yep, and uh, yep, and I'm gonna give him a plus because no one is talking about this. Great vid. No one is talking about this. Practically, no one is talking about this. Okay, and there I left a comment on his video, which is the respectful thing to do. On making the yeah. existing stuff all unique and interesting. Kind of like thank you again. Uh, who is this? It is uh, thank you again, uh, Frankly Gaming, for the extra content for my stream. I'm going to cite you twice because this was a good video. We need more stuff like this. If the developers don't wake up to the fact that they're being such pieces of shit directly to us, they're like being pieces of shit, and it's costing them their industry. They've got to stop. They've got to actually make us like satisfied customers again. This filler and this bullshit and these long games that aren't really filled with a lot of fun. Mm. The whole thing that made them popular in the first place. Because while grandness and scale in games is very impressive and I do like it personally, it may even be the thing that made Elden Ring more popular than Dark Souls. What I like even more is not having to deal with all the bullshit to get to the actually fun or engaging things. It's like you took a 10 out of 10 game and mixed it with a 5 out of 10 one. Yep. Where things are just tedious for tedium's sake. Yep. All in an effort to hit this I loved what he said. It's like you, you it's like you took a perfect 10 game but you filled it with five filler, you know? And sure, there's like Elden Ring's a perfect 10 game, but it's got a lot of filler. It's got a lot of it, you know? Look at that. 700, not bad, not bad. What else do I have? I don't really have... I need to go animal hunting, but it, it's expensive to keep the arrows, you know? There we go. Oh, no, no. I guess it's not really expensive in shards, though, which is good. 
so there we go we got it we got a lot of ammo left and, and i guess i'll top off on uh or well uh, uh yeah i can't really top off i need to go animal hunting which i do like i like that they put that in the game you you do need to hunt animals if you want to buy stuff and i i really like that actually and i can't remember where i saw the best animals but i believe it was over here in this area i think so we'll go back to there and, and do a, an exploration session looking for animals to hunt because i just broke the bank on all of my um pouch upgrade stuff and and, and that means i have no money at all all the rest of it is precious to me precious actually i do have some sales to make never mind i do have something else to sell them there's all the all the grays i have to sell them my grays here we go valuables to sell here we go not bad that was some money okay and then i need to put a booster on my alt finally and i got her in uh where's my alt where is she there she is i need you to trade me trade and i am going to send a booster over uh to uh hey look it's 168 million in ice <laughs> and another fucking 25 million so um i am trying to trade yeah yeah trying to trade and i'm trying to give her some drugs three drugs here's drugs and she's like oh thank you yeah drugs are always a really good gift drugs are the best gift by far or or sex there's nothing really quite like when a woman is just in the mind to gift you with her body. It occasionally happens. You'd be surprised. Women will sometimes just be like, oh my God, I want to fuck you so bad. I'm just going to give you the gift of sex right now. I love that. I love it when women do that. They're just like, oh yeah, we're just going to fuck right now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, and honestly, it's like giving you a gift. It kind of is. It's like, all right, thank you for that gift. Uh, I will use it wisely. <laughs> Anyways, uh, now, um, I am trying to go hunt animals and I was suggesting that I go to the Northwest to do so. I think it was actually up here in the North end. It was all the, all the major animals were up here in the North end by this shelter. So we'll go up there. I need to produce fast travel kits because it's going to annoy me when I run out. And I'll do that now. Uh, yeah, and then all the resources and everything are in my are in my, are in my bag. I need to, uh, yeah, uh, produce. Um... Wait, what? No, wait. R, change. I want to do fast travel. Yep. Equip. And then craft. Here we go, 12 fast travel packs. It's a it's beautiful uh, afternoon, I think, actually. Never mind, I, I am gonna sit, I'm gonna sit. Oh no, this is unavailable, why? Okay, well. Uh, we will go north looking for burrower sound shells and hunt animals on the way. I don't like that you can't loot while you're scanning because scanning is about looting it's a bad design choice i'm terribly sorry but it is most of the most of the time scanning is about looting and not not being able to loot while you're in the scanner is goddamn dumb that's just i'm sorry but that's an example of the shit that you do you waste our time on purpose you know oh yeah 286 bitch right in your eye shut you down i did beautiful shot he was moving too. He was moving fast, motherfucker. Shut you down. I did. I did. I did. Stupid extreme difficulty mob. Ooh, purple.
I'd probably hunt animals for a little while, but let's get this booster in if it's ready. I don't know if it's ready yet. Oh, it, I am, I am. So, okay. All right, let's get high. Oh, yeah. Master at arms, bitch. Quaffing them master at arms. Oh, yeah. There goes 100 million. Or 80. 80 million. Uh, so, okay. And then I guess I'll go ice mining. Someone's here, but... Eh. Um, oh, look, it's, it's, oh, Dwala. It's, um, it's, it's all people from Battlestar Galactica. That's cool. I love D, D uh, Dwala. You know, I didn't know, but the actress who played D, or no, I'm sorry, the actress who played Callie. So I love Callie too, more. But I mean, like, or, well, I, no, I liked, uh, yeah, I really liked uh, Dwala more, though. But, um... Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, um, I lost it. Something about Duala and... Oh, yeah. So the actress Callie was actually a big Scientologist groomer. And she got canceled. And she actually is a really evil person. And it's weird because I like Callie. I like Callie a lot. And um, I think I like the actress, too. Even I think I like her personality. She was just caught up in the cult, and she, uh, she was helping Warren Jeffs raise like like rape children, I think, or something. Or I'm sorry, it wasn't Warren Jeffs. It was uh, it was something. But she, or, I'm sorry, she no, she was in a cult with Alex Mack. I think she was in the Alex Mack cult, and she was like grooming people for the cult. And and, and, and the actress, not the actress, but the the character Callie, the actress that played the character Callie in Battlestar Galactica, which is a top five show for me. Really good show if you guys haven't seen it. I think I like it. I like it more than Star Wars, frankly. I, I, I do. I like I like Battlestar Galactica, the television show, a lot more than Star Wars because there's a lot more of it. There's a lot more Battlestar Galactica than there is Star Wars. Like canon, Battlestar. That hurt. Where'd you go? I wish you could see their level. 163. I don't like how the yeah, the critical strike animation is. That needs to be fixed. I know I'm demanding, but I mean, eh. Uh, Master at Arms. Yep, good, okay. I suppose I will go out mining because I'm not really doing anything else. Why not? Um, so we'll go out mining here. Even if it is only like 20 million, it's 20 million that I didn't have previously, you know? So... Always be mining. Warp drive active. Drive active. Need set for <coughs> to fill out games with as much content and things to do as possible just to justify a purchase. For every amazing encounter, like the Red Giant of the North, there are five similar bosses or trash mobs I have to sift my way through to even get them. To me, it's the antithesis of what games should be. And somewhere in the last couple of years and decades, we lost the plot and decided that games need all these filler sections and content for some reason. For as much as something like Call of Duty takes a lot of flack, a lot of the original campaigns for Black Ops, Modern Warfare, and World at War were so amazing because they had none of this annoying half-baked content to get through. Each mission was short, sweet, and to the point, and because of that, it was actually so much more fun. And even though that meant the campaigns were really quick, it also meant I didn't have to deal with things like this constantly. Stumbling upon a map where I have no idea what to do next and all of it is trash In fact another game that suffered from this syndrome even more to the extent that it quite literally ruined the entire package is Starfield 
a game with literally hundreds of hours of content to the point where you could play for weeks on end and still not see everything it has to offer. And that sounds great, right? For only $70, you were getting dozens of games worth of content to explore and fall in love with. Wrong. No. Because in order to achieve... Because it wasn't fun and the loading screen sucked. Achieve this level of scale, Bethesda had to cut back on so much. I Starting think the heart and core of the video game industry is Nexus mods, and, and what Bethesda did to Nexus mods is a uh, war crime level of fucking nasty and shitty, and I don't like Bethesda anymore. I'm not going to boycott them, but I don't like them anymore, you understand? I can do Bethesda better than Bethesda. Bethesda fucked the mod scene, just fucked them and cut them out. Completely cut them out. Just recently, too, like three months ago. They just killed the mod scene, which is why there's only about eight active mods for Starfield. Like, eight. There's your average, average ones, like, make it a Millennium Falcon and stuff. But I'm talking about, like, in the top hundred mods, there's only about eight that actually have a purpose, you know? That aren't, like, changing skins or that kind of thing. And the reason that happens is because Bethesda just straight butt-fucked the mod community and cut them out. Cut them out. They killed SKSE, which is the Skyrim scripts uh, extender that was the main engine for changing all of Bethesda's games. And uh, when they cut SKSE out, they killed the modding scene. And on top of it, when they released starfield they didn't they didn't allow them to to work in the creation and engine the way they needed to and they were like we would like uh we'll let you do paid mod uh production for us but you'll have to work for us you know and it, the whole thing was just butt pirate triple anus butt pirate bullshit you know and i just uh you know left a bad taste in my mouth this time around you have lived and thrived with that scene supporting everything that you did for for 10 games or something like that whatever it was it was like daggerfall morrowind oblivion skyrim fallout 3 fallout 4 fallout 76 fallout new vegas skyrim Starfield. That's 10 games, right? 10 games. And then you just cut them out. You just cut them out. After a 25 year or whatever it's been. No, it's not, it hasn't been 25 years. It's been 19 years or something. 19 years. You just cut Nexus the fuck out. That left such a bad taste in my mouth. And almost no one's talking about it. Honestly, I don't think anybody's modding Bethesda games anymore. Or they would be talking about it. There are systems for crafting, building outposts, building ships, sneaking. And that's weird training, because that comics. mod scene is was pretty much the brain trust for the entire industry. Without their changes, we wouldn't have good games. You know what I'm saying? Without the community telling the developers how bad they are at this and, and changing things against their will, essentially, to make it better. <coughs> Excuse me. We, we wouldn't have good game production. Dialogue, pickpocketing, faction reputation. Zero G combat, space combat, ground combat, melee weapons, laser weapons, ballistic weapons, and so on. Yeah, and all that, all that fucking filler for a game that was mostly loading screens. The combat was okay, but it wasn't good like 76. There are moments in 76 where there's like a, a Grafton monster, which is like the size of a, of a, of a fucking ant or something. Fighting a deck claw while a scorch beast is flying overhead, hammering huge waves of nuclear shit at you. There's five or six zombies and they're in your personal space. And you're trying to fire a fat man at the at the at the Grafton monster that's fighting the the fucking deck claw and shit. And you can't get the you can't get the rounds off because the zombies keep stunning you and shit. That combat was not in Starfield. It's not in any way or fucking form. 76 still has like the most and by i mean entertaining not good but entertaining combat i have ever witnessed in a game because so many wacky things can happen there's mini nukes and you know there's like giant fucking huge mobs that have huge rate like one shot rate you know radiation waves and shit like this there's like you know there's there's like mini bosses that come that are like really nasty that have like some some crazy mutation they'll be immune to or they'll, they'll reflect damage and shit like this and it has that feel of like uh you, you ever play final fantasy 15 at night 15 uh, is a good game it was just un, it was unfinished 
uh unlike 16 and, and 7 remake uh 15 you know 15 was unfinished but if you go out at night as a level like 40 in in final fantasy 15 you will see some of the craziest enemy d design that's ever been put in a video game and it's diverse too it's all of the final fantasy monsters and they are, they can all be different mutations they, they can all be certain different random number of levels and, and they can all be kind of kind of crazy and they're huge they're like the size of 50 or 60 of the main characters combined you know they're like huge they're like fucking huge you have to fight them like they're not bams they're bigger than bams they're they're like the 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 fire giants in elden ring they're just humongous you know and you're you like it's hard um it's hard starfield did not have that starfield did not have that randomness it should have had all these crazy alien fights when i look at starfield i think of the combat and i think if you want to fix starfield you must you must open up all of the, all of those dead areas where, where you have to do all the scanning and everything that, that are very finite and just and turn them into endless mob spawners and then the game gets good because you're constantly dungeons and dragons -ing. You, you needed like 50 more mobs than you did Bethesda fucked up so bad with Starfield. I could fix Starfield, though. I could. I could do it as a modder. All I have to do is kill the kill the loading screens on on any on anything but interplanetary travel. Um, get get a mob spawner that puts random leveled and ran, ran, random difficulty and random styled and random colored and random sized enemies. And I don't know why Bethesda's not smart enough to do that. The mob spawners are all the mob spawners since Fall Fallout New Vegas have have been able to spawn. 50 different colors of 50 different sizes of 50 different AIs of 50 different types of mobs and stuff. So the, the enemy spawner in fallout new Vegas is, is, is a marvel of the modern ages because it's never boring. There's, there's like 75 different mobs and they're all different colors and all different sizes. So it's, it really feels like you're never seeing the same mob ever again. Right. And we've been able to do this since fallout new Vegas, but Bethesda's is so goddamn bad at design. They're like, they don't even know how to put a mob spawner in the motherfucker. And I don't really understand that. I don't understand it. When you look at the, the 26 million downloads of the Fallout New Vegas mob spawner, you, 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 wouldn't you normally think that, wow, 26 million seem to really want this, that you should maybe actually put a mob spawner in 76? I mean, it's got a mob spawner, but it's not good. I want to I want a mob every 35 feet that's this that's, that's kind of kind of stressing you like this game, you know? It's really quiet all the time. See it? It's really quiet, but there are mobs. that They are around, and they fucking attack you and there's a lot of variations of them and they're really fun and they're memorable and shit starfield had a, a magical capacity for combat and i still believe in it too and i think a simple couple of mods could fix the game for me anyways but i don't i don't think they are intelligent enough to do it Th these people that we think of are as super geniuses i don't think they can even design kids games anymore i don't think they're super geniuses anymore i think they're burnt out i don't think they even know how to add an add an enemy spawner to fucking starfield and so I I went to Nexus Mods day one, and I went to Nexus Mods like four days ago, and I went looking at, I mean, let's do it now. We'll go to the Starfield Nexus Mods. You're still not going to find a goddamn mob spawner. And that That's the only thing the game really needs. I don't care about the fucking story. I want to I wanna travel a thousand planets with a thousand different looks and a thousand different fucking dungeons with with a thousand different types of mobs that are all the different sizes and stuff. And I want to get, and I want to, and I want to level characters over and over and over again through Bethesda as the combat and i know that sounds dumb but you got the starfield combat better this time it was as good or better than 76 it didn't have the problems 76 had definitely you could actually switch weapons and actually reload weapons and shit like that so <clears throat> let's go look at starfield nexus right and let's see what business is doing what because you're going to see a bunch of utility mods just to try to make the game playable and nothing else you know what i'm saying popular of all time right we have the SS sfse which got 1.4 million downloads but notice that and it's updated but you can't run it they killed sfse they killed they killed baka they killed the fsse so and and star ui is as is is ss fssc now these these down these 1 million downloads they all occurred in the first like month of starfield's history right when i was playing it because past like four or five months ago they broke all of the script extenders on all of the bethesda games don't believe me go google they broke all of the script extenders so all of these mods this mod 
that mod or that mod anything that requires sfse at all you're going to see little parentheses of F anything as sfse is definitely definitely going to require a mod that doesn't work anymore sfse does not work anymore so like you know so understand all of these mods are worthless so you see nothing here but Bethesda killed the modding scene without the modding scene the the, the stupid ass fucking uh cut you know cut off head in the sand developers have no idea how to fix their games so Bethesda killing the modding scene is like Bethesda killing the video game scene. You know what I'm saying? And I mean it. And so I think, fuck you, Todd. It's not, it's not, it's not like, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, it's not like I'm being hyperbolic like all the other nerds that are angry, angry at you for Starfield. I'm angry at you for maybe potentially poisoning the entire well of the entire video game scene. Because you killing the mod scene is not a good fucking... That's not a good premise for, for the future of video games. What in the fuck, man? Why would you kill a scene that flourished so beautifully for 20 years? Why would you do that? Why would you break SFSE? That makes no fucking sense. And there's no real solution beyond hacking, black hat hacking Steam. Which is just like, what happened to you corporate pieces of shit? When you signed that, when you signed that, that order... You definitely condemned like 25% of the, the, the entire video game industry to essentially mediocrity. And I really hate you for it, Todd. I kind of hate you for it. I could do Bethesda better than Bethesda. And so on. But the thing is, none of it is amazing. And I really no, do none mean of it, it is. when I no. say the word. No, it could amazing. be that combat could be could be amazing if if you had made amazing. it as good as seventy six, but you kind of didn't. There is not a mini nuke in in Starfield. There is not all kinds of laser weapons. I mean, there is, but there's not good ones. Not really. They have cool mods. They have cool procs, but they don't have cool diversity right the cool thing about 76 is is there's like 45 different weapons and they all come in different modified variations that's, that turn them into shotguns or scatter guns or or beam weapons or projectile or or ads or sorry or um or hit scan and it changes all the functions of the weapons so all 45 of those weapons can be modded like borderlands it's a crazy crazy variations of things and even named versions that, that have have named uh special mods and stuff right this was in starfield but it's not fun because there's nothing to kill all those enemies in the far cry towers are bullshit I, I enjoyed fighting them but i didn't think i wanted to spend a lot of time doing it because i should be able to fight on the planet surface as well as in the dungeons just like every other bethesda game but to me you autistically crippled your games you autistically crippled uh starfield and i expect you to do it with elder, elder scroll 6 2 i don't think you know how to design anymore and the mod scene was how you how, it was what was saving you and i can't believe you fucking stabbed the mod scene in the back todd that's that's some dirt dirty low down dirty business i think todd would say that they monetized the mod scene but no, they literally broke the script extenders, which killed the mod scene. How the fuck are they supposed to do any mods without the script extenders? They have to extend the script to do anything interesting. What the fuck were you thinking? Yeah, you monetized them, but you also c completely crippled them. So yeah, they can't make any money if they have to roll around in wheelchairs wherever they go. You crippled them. No disrespect against handicapped people, but I'm just saying if they had to worry more about how to even attain the mod happening, much less actually making the mod, you have crippled the fucking video game scene. And I can do Bethesda better than Bethesda. Heels that make everything so fucking bu based bunch of bullshit, based bunch of triple anus, rich whitey, fucked up shit to do. You know what I'm saying? It's the kind of shit fucking Bill Gates does. It's goddamn disgusting. You burned the mod scene. Fuck Bill Gates. Fuck Microsoft. Fuck Bethesda. Fuck Bethesda Soft. They're the same company, essentially. They will be eventually. Dining. All these mon Monopoly oligarchs are just shitting in our soup and being like, here's, 90, here, here's, here's quadruple A soup. And then they just shit in it, you know, like Ubisoft. And you're like, nah, man your perfect 10 premise is is cut with 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 with, with level with with um uh, uh like 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 f tier fucking bullshit so it's just this cut product that feels terrible it's like what the drug dealers did to heroin and cocaine you had this pure drug of good video games now you're cutting on it and stepping on it and putting putting you're know, cutting it with garbage and all this and trust me eventually 
you won't be a drug dealer anymore. You cut it with garbage, you won't be a drug deal lo- drug dealer long. We'll, we'll oust you. It will be like, nah, motherfucking uh, Mar- Mar- uh, Marlo's weak this month. He's got he's cutting his his games with garbage. You know what I'm saying? Don't buy Starfield. It's garbage, right? And so we go down the block to Barksdale's crew and we get our good shit that isn't totally cut, you know? Cause I mean, I'm sorry, but that's how that works. Like we will go to a different, we'll go to a different developer if it's necessary. If you continue to kill the scene and poison the well, I won't buy you anymore. But to even get to that, I'm in this weird, reluctant place where I feel that I might not play Elder Scrolls six, which is fucked up because I didn't even want to play Starfield past like 20 hours or 60 hours, whatever it was. They're not fun. This to me is fun. It's 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 immersive. It's got all kinds of mixes of combat between combat and or sorry between close CQC and range. It's got cool like 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 RPG uh you know stuff in it. It's got damage numbers and all this. And I just appreciate like for instance, where are the damage numbers? Like I think there was damage numbers finally in Starfield, but there wasn't damage numbers in Bethesda games for 20 years. How dare you, sir? How dare you make RPGs without fucking damage numbers? I believe it's time for Bethesda to uh, to go uh, over the hill. Yeah. I'm not saying they're dead. I'm saying it's time to go over the hill. It's time to go down to Florida, you know, and, and retire. You are a dinosaur, and your dinosaur game making is, 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 is... We're done with it, you know? God damn it. The archery could have been better in the sequel. Um, I am used to Hanzo on Overwatch, where I can I can like zigzag s uh, s curve uh, flick shot right like this like like that. See it? It's like you go if you if you slow it down, it looks like a Z shape kind of. It's like Z Z Z. And what this is doing is it's dragging the pixels directly to the pixel that you want to hit, and it's called tracking right. And it's in it's flick shots and flick shots are how you become good like ninja and flick shots require a lot of skill and a lot of practice and I've gotten good at them now I can peg somebody with a sniper rifle point blank moving at full speed like no problem I can track and nail the headshot I can do it I can't do it consistently but I have the skill to, to flick shot to do it but this game doesn't have flick shot not really. Like, wherever you fire, well, sorry, wherever the dot is, is where the arrow goes. You see it? There's no bullet drop. See it? No bullet drop at all. And so, then, and that is tragedy. You should have made it a projectile system that was a lot a lot easier to see the arrow, like, uh, like Hanzo, and a lot more crisp and satisfying, like Hanzo. Hanzo is the best archery that we've ever had in a video game, and you should have just stole it. You should have just outright stole it for the sequel. It was okay that the first game didn't have it, but this weird uh, no bullet drop shit, see it? No bullet drop at all that's really fucking weird it's really weird and also you can't do flick shots at all because wherever the dot is is where the arrow goes but i mean with flick shots you're trying to move where the arrow is moving while like like as you release so this it's got right side momentum as it curves and stuff like that right it's got it's got right side momentum if you're dragging right as you release like that like 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 that like like really fast as you release you go you go zig shot shot and 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 you let go uh you let go halfway through the shot and that's how you nail a perfect headshot on a, on a on a target moving extremely fast as you let go of the shot halfway through the drag right and you're like okay and, and so if i want to hit what's the what, like if i want to hit uh say like that rock right i start here i don't shoot at the rock because if the rock is moving i don't shoot at the rock i start here and i go drag see it God damn it. Fucking ammo is so stupid. Fucking ammo in the triple anus. Fucking dumb dumbs. So, yeah. And so, like, so I don't aim at the rock because the rock's moving, right? I'm not going to hit it. If, if the rock's moving and I fire like that, the rock's not going to be there when the shot arrives. This is true of Fortnite or anything competitive at all. So projectiles are really important to master. You, you need, so, so, so in order to nail the perfect headshot on a moving target, you have to start over here and drag and release as the cursor is going past the head of the target, right? And you go, 
like that right and that that no matter what you're gonna hit the rock you're gonna hit him even even if he's moving see it because no matter what the like so that's how you that's how you do a drag shot you know a flick shot with projectile like that right you start way over you don't start on the target you go like that see me that's a flick shot if you don't know what it is get good at it you know what i'm saying this is why you fail at rust that's why i kick your fucking ass on rust all the time you know even though i'm worse than you because you don't know how to shoot you don't and 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 so yeah and, and so once you understand and, and archery is a good way to get really good at that stuff you know so yeah and i don't go aiming at the rock i go like that and so this game you can't do that because there is no bullet drop there is no projectile the the arrow goes wherever the dot is you know and that's that's fun too that is a different style and that's fun too i like it when a, when when you know you just put the dot on the target and the arrow goes to the target right but I mean, and I think some of the other bows do have bullet drop, right? No, no, they don't. See it? So that's very weird. By the sequel, you should have stolen Hanzo and put it in your archery game because you have the number one archery game of all time. I can do Gorilla better than Gorilla. I'm serious. I can do Gorilla better than Gorilla. They should have stolen the Hanzo system and put it in this game. And trust me, the kids wouldn't be able to stop playing this game if it was like that. The way they can't stop playing Overwatch. You know, even though it's a bad game. So, I mean, Jeff Kaplan gave you the perfect archery of all time. It's perfect, you know? Why wouldn't you copy it? You have the number one archery game in the single player scene. You should have stole Hanzo, but you didn't. And that makes no sense. I can't do flick shots on the bow. So the game wasn't as, as fun to me as I would like it to be. It's good for, it's good lessons in archery, but it's also not as good as it should be. Because I can't do fucking flick... I can't do... I, can't, I, I can do flick shots, but doing this is the exact same thing as doing this, right? And I, I want to be... I, I want to play this... I wanted to play this game to work on my on my Hanzo flick shots in a single-player game, but but you didn't even include it. You didn't even inclu include it, which is so fucking weird to me, you know? Just weird. Like, if I... Okay, if I don't... If I... Look, even if I... If there's bullet drop if I don't... If I don't charge the shot, there is bullet drop, and then so I start to think, oh, I can I can flick shot if I can flick shot if I don't charge, but then it does no damage, and and see how your design is self crippling, and and you come across as stupid to, to us. You kind of come you kind of come across. This is simple, easy things to a gamer. We know this stuff. We've known it for twenty years. We can tell you about this stuff, hit scan, projectile, all that stuff. But you as a developer, you are too clueless to put bullet drop in your archery game. Why would it why would a, a bow and arrow ever not have bullet drop? I think I think I think of bow and arrow as essentially the quintessential bullet drop mechanic weapon, you know? So why why would I be able to hit that mountain exactly where my dot is? Why would that be that case? I mean that's that's just dumb. We we we've we've had bullet drop in, in, in games for you know, ten years. I don't know why you you took it out of of of, of a horizon. That that's a a serious like goddamn like like not deal breaker, but it's a bad bad fuck up. You got to get that drop physics in here. It, I I would say it was the most crucial thing that you needed to change between one and two, and you didn't. And so now I think of this as a kids game, even though it's a full blown adult game with a lot of adult themes. I think of it as a kids game because it has kids game mechanics of no bullet drop. You know, only kids only kids games don't do bullet drop. <laughs> That's a silly silly thing. Only kid, only kids games will let you do this. Even Fortnite itself, a kids game, still has bullet drop and won't let it will let you actually do flick shots. Pretty much every every competitive fucking game in the last ten years lets you do do flick shots. But why not Horizon? Why no flick shots in Horizon? Why why this uh, no bullet drop thing where I can't you know I, I can't I can't you know I can't flick shot at all. Like I may as well just put the dot on the fucking target and just start hosing arrows. You know instead of actually aiming or anything like that because there's there's not fun there's no there's no strategy in it there's no skill level there's no aiming not really it's just putting the dot on the target like grand theft auto and squeezing the trigger and your game had a lot more potential than that and you, and you crippled it in a, in a way and i can see why this game didn't pull like a 9.6 like it should have because you didn't you didn't evolve in some of the things that you did need to evolve in bullet drop being the major one almost everything else is fine but the bullet drop is not. You needed to fix that, and you didn't. Now it's weird. There is bullet drop in the game, which is even more confusing. It's like it's like, it's like you you wrote bullet drop into the game. Watch, see it. Like like watch, see it. 
bullet drop. See, the, the, the arrows are dropping. They're going to get, like, if I fire off into the, the air far away, they're going to fall. You see it? So there is some, but it's not real bullet drop. It's just the tra trajectory is, is already programmed into the arrow, right? So it's it, like it's kind of weird. It's it, yeah, it's it's a program trajectory that's always going to be a certain coefficient. It's never this 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 math th the math thing of trying to pull a flick shot with bullet drop. It's always just get the dot on the target. And and and, and I don't know why you would do an archery game without bullet drop. Do you understand why I think you're stupid? I love you and I love your game. I love Gorilla, but I think you're stupid. I think you're like rather bad at what you do. I, I mean this. I think I think all of you are. Every every everybody in the triple anus. I think you're particularly bad at what you do, and it's weird. And I think it requires a, like a, a, a like an alliance or like what's what's the word? It requires a rendezvous between the gamers and the developers. Or how would you know if your product's good and you don't listen to us and you don't think about this stuff? You should. Anybody with a fucking brain. I don't understand. I would fire your entire game testing staff, I guess, because anybody in the game testing staff should have told you how bad of a fuck up it was to do the sequel without bullet drop. Anybody with a clue, any any of those game testers that you're paying, they should know better. They should know better than to let you, I mean, not let you, but they should, they, they should have complained the entire time they were working there about how there's not bullet drop in this game like Hanzo from Overwatch. That should have been the primary the primary complaint. I know it's come up, but you guys just ignore it. You ignore these game-breaking things because you think we're just too dumb to see it. And I resent that. I resent that about you. We are not too dumb to see it, you know? We're not too dumb to see it. And so I, I really wish you hadn't crippled your game like that. I need the bullet drop on the arrows. I actually need it. It makes me way worse live service player if I'm playing a game without bullet drop, you know what I'm saying? Because then I'm thinking like, oh, the arrow is just going to go right where my dot is. And that's not how most games work. That's not how bullet drop works. That's not how modern games work. Why did you make your modern game have no bullet drop? That makes no sense to me. I'm going to get off the cyclical thing. But I mean, it's a cyclical stupid. So I get stuck on cyclical complaining. It's a cyclical stupid. It's it's a form of cyclical stupid that leads to other cyclical stupid problems. Like lack of fun or lack of depth or lack, lack of weight. And in, in, in the arrows hitting the target and stuff like that, that you should have addressed because you're making like the best, the, 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 the most, the highest. But I, th I think, I think Horizon Forbidden West had the most highest potential for a, for a, a, like what it could have been in terms of its, of its, of its efficacy and in, in reaching the scene and stuff. It could have been the greatest sequel of all time, but it fell short because of stuff like this that, that easily a game tester could have told you, but you're obviously either not listening, you aren't paying the right game testers, or you just don't care one of those three you should care the bullet drop is the co is the core and the heart the the arrow drop is the core in the heart of the game it is ridiculous that i can aim at this pig and hit him right now like this it makes sense when they're close like this right it doesn't make sense when they're way off medium at like 90 meters or something and there is bullet drop, but it's bad. So why did you even include it at that point? Be consistent and don't even put the bullet drop in the game. It's like the, the bullet drop that you did bother to fucking put in the game is fucking terrible. So just don't even do it at all at that point. Don't don't make the game worse by trying to put bad bullet drop in on inferior weapons and stuff. Just don't insult me by, by, by putting any bullet drop in the game at all, you know? But instead, it show, you show me that you know what bullet drop is. You, you can show me that it exists in your engine. See it? It exists in your engine. It's right there. I mean, it doesn't really exist. Not really. It's not much bullet drop. Not really. See it? So, like, you know, it doesn't really exist in your engine, but it, it is there. If it, it is in the engine. You can make it happen. You can make the bullet drop happen. See it? It's right there. See it? That is bullet drop. The arrow is dropping. See it? Why did you make this so good? The, 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 the light tap on an arrow that does no damage, but not the actual fire of the shot. The actual fire of the shot is garbage. It has no skill, no, you know, no growth, nothing. It has no, no skill game bonus. It, if you get good at bullet timing shots and stuff, it's good. But this game desperately, desperately desperately needed flick shots and you edited them edited them edited them, edited them out also that cursor is garbage my friend this is quite literally the worst cursor i have ever seen in a video game and you made this is a top 20 game of all time i think what's with your idiot cursor your idiot cursor is goddamn horrible you'd see something like this on a submarine in a submarine game what in the literal fuck you know what
all you needed was a dot what's with the huge circle and those two dashes that mean nothing at all they, they don't mean anything it's like it's indicating how tight your bowstring is but bullet drop doesn't exist so who the fuck cares how much the how, how much i draw the bow I mean, I, I guess if the damage is reduced, I care. But, I mean, I really don't... I, I mean, I don't see why the cursor is so goddamn bad like that. I don't know why you don't have bullet drop and all this stuff that I can make fun of you to your fucking face about. Yeah, I'm being a critic. I'm being a critic. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not being productive. But I'm saying, though, these are things that your staff should have been extremely aware of. Like, fire those game testers. These are things that you are... You are literally putting mil hundreds of millions of dollars in jeopardy of all of your investors' money with those worthless game testers or whatever your issue is. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I don't know. I couldn't have made this game without fucking arrow drop. I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have squared it with my people. I couldn't have squared it to my people that bought the game. I couldn't have done it. I would have been like, nah, man, I had to put the arrow drop in the game and it was really hard, but I did it, right? And you, you seem to cut that corner, but it costs you really bad. You cut the corners all the time. It costs you more than it saves you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you should have just put the bullet drop in the fucking game. It's, it, I mean, what? I mean, it obviously exists in the game. Why would you not, not, why, why not actually perfect it and make the game feel good? When I fire this arrow, it should not get for, like, okay, I'm firing at this tree right here, right? This arrow shouldn't hit, should hit somewhere around here. You see it? Down here. If I'm firing at the tree, at the top of the tree, this arrow should hit somewhere around, like, this little knot right here. But instead, it hits right where I fired. And that is garbage. I'm sorry. That is not that is not how good shooters have been for 15 years or something like that. Since Battlefield 3, we have not done games without ball, bullet drop. Even even Elden Ring has bullet drop, I think. You know? Maybe not, but I think it does. I'm, I'm fairly sure. Even Elden Ring has bullet drop. That's such a fucking bad fuck up that how, does, how do you square getting that past your game testers to launch without them warning you how bad of a fuck up that is? Especially in a scene that's so over fucking Call of Duty that they're all thinking about it. They're thinking about how you executed it. They're thinking about the recoil. Like, I mean, the blizzard toxicity around this shit and the rust toxicity has poisoned them. And they're thinking about the recoil and your execution of it. And this execution is frankly amateur. Amateur hour. That's all I have to say about that filler content that doesn't seem to have any love or care put into it and this problem is permeated throughout the games industry in all genres. like right now games. playing Otherwise, horizon feels like i'm playing assassin's creed valhalla half the time unless the archery is involved so the archery should have been your bread and butter which i thought i think you thought it was but and, and also the, the the mobs the mobs are really cool too but I'm just saying there's a lot of variety, but I'm just saying like, I think the archery, I don't know how you release an archery game without worrying about the archery. I don't know how you release the Starfield without a mob spawner. I don't know how you do these things. These amazing experiences marred down by a struggle to even get to the good stuff. Why are we okay with this? What is the point of pointless content? I've seen some. Yeah, what's the point of it? What's the point of it? Late, sort of. But if anything, there should be. What's the even point of mediocre more. content? Why are we yeah. getting happy or excited when we hear a game is over sixty hours long with tons of things to do? That sounds horrible to me because it sounds like a lot of you guessed it filler content. busy work. The whole reason I get so much more excited for shorter games nowadays is because that lack of length also comes. You have to understand. I actually failed the eighth grade. I'm, I'm proud of this, honestly. I'm, I'm proud of it. I failed the eighth grade. You want to know why? Well, I, I skipped 110 days of school. That'll do it. But the other thing was is I wouldn't do homework. I didn't do homework past eighth grade. Now, I would go to study circles and with my friends, and I would finish main lesson books in the private school that I did graduate from in high school. Right. Or I didn't graduate from the high school from the private school. I graduated from public school, but I did three years in private and one in public. I got expelled in my junior year. I failed the eighth grade. I got, I got, I got expelled in my junior year and I had to go to a public school for my senior year. Right. And you want to know why I failed the eighth grade? It wasn't just that I skipped 110 days of school. It's that I literally didn't do a single piece of homework all year. And when they asked me to do it, I'd be like, no, they're like, where's your assignment? Where's your homework? I don't do homework. 
and they don't like that they're like all right go on down to the principal's office or the fucking whatever and i'm like i don't do busy work i don't do homework i don't feel uh that it teaches me anything that i couldn't demonstrate right now and that's how i used to say it to him too i'm like yeah okay give me a test they'd be like you need to do the homework or you won't understand the the stuff and i'm like that is not true give me the test and then i would ace the test and they were like you're cheating and i'd be like no i did not no i did not I do not need to do repetition like the rest of the idiots of the world. If I understand a concept, I can probably perform the concept pretty well the rest of my life. I'm not an idiot. So your homework to me was essentially the, the opposite of learning. It's wasting time doing nothing to prove that you can do something that you've already proven that you can do. And I think it's the worst elements of the human nature kind of homework. You know, now if the, if the teacher feels that you don't have a fundamental and you need, you need it, I think homework can have a place and I have done homework in my life, but if it's something that I can ace the test for, I will not do it. And I'll, and I'll argue with the teacher too. And I'll argue with their, I'll argue with them about their style and what it is they, they and why it is they're failing me. You know, I failed English, you know, I went for a, a literature degree in, in college and I failed English because she forced us to write a paper and she failed me when I didn't write it. And, and she said, I need you to write a paper about your family and your identity. And I was like, I would rather go to Guantanamo Bay. I'd rather take prison butt rape. I'd rather, I hate my family. I, I, I will not do that. I told her, I was like, I, I begged her. I was like, I will write you five um, you know, treatises, I will do anything to pass this class, but I will not, I will not talk to my family. I will not study them. I will not do my identity. Uh, and she was like, well, write about that. And I was like, I, I don't want to write about that. I will end up committing suicide. And I believe I kind of did. I was like, I don't want to write about that. I, I, I was like, I don't want to write about that. I, I, I will write a paper about any other subject in the fucking world, but my fucking failure family, except for my mother. She was a success. She made millions. She was, she's, she's still doing really well, you know? Um, but everyone else in my family, I, I would say, well, they weren't failures, but they were definitely failed at being family. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, I'll do anything. I will, I will, I was told, I was like, I will do anything. I will do anything. I will pay you money. I don't care what it is to, to pass this class, but I will not write you this paper. And she was like, I cannot give you a double standard where you can just write a different paper that, if you, if you want to. And she was like, I can't, that is not fair to the other students. I cannot do that. And I was like, I understand. So, so, and I was like, how important is this paper? And she was like, oh, it's, it's, um, 30% of your grade. And I was like, oh, good. So I'm already automatically at a C. And she was like, yeah, and you don't do homework. So you're also kind of below a C too. And I was like, oh God. And uh, she was like, yeah. And, 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 and we shook hands and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, and sure enough, uh, about 10 days later, I was in my math class acing it. I was acing all those classes except for English. Right. I was acing all my classes. Cause I, I, I am a smart person. I, I know the fundamentals. I, I can do this stuff. I can. Uh, the, uh, I go to school and the teacher's like, you're not in this class. And this is how I failed out of college too. It was so fucked up. I was like, what do you mean? I have, I, I, ha I have a 3.0 GPA. What the fuck are you talking about? I am not failing this class. I have A's in six out of my seven classes. What are you talking about? It's actually higher than it's, it was like 3.4 in the end. I failed out of college with a 3.4. Because I was withdrawing from classes per my mother's advice. And when I withdrew from the class, it affected something called a uh, uh, completion rate. And my completion rate went below 67%, even though I was acing all the classes because I withdrew from any class that I couldn't get an A plus in because in my mother's day, that's how, how college was for them. If they were failing the class, they just withdrew the third day, you know, or if they felt that they couldn't get an A plus in it, they would just withdraw and, and maintain their, their, their grade average by, you know, really good grade average of 3.8 or 4.0 or something like that by just withdrawing from the class and going and doing a, a, another, another class that they would be successful in. And so my mother told me like, look, Look for look for arguments with the professors if you're not going to get along with the professor you're probably not going to get a good grade so just withdraw from the class and i took this advice and using this advice i aced every class in college and failed out 
And, uh, and, and, and I'm not resentful for the advice. I took the advice and I still believe in the advice and I think she was right to give it to me, but I mean, it wasn't the way the system worked by the time I was in school, I show up to school, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, 10 months into my second year and they're like, you don't go to this school anymore. And I was like, what? And they were like, go to the fucking, uh, the admissions office and, and go see. And I was like, okay. And I went to the fucking admissions office and they're like, oh yeah, you don't go to the school anymore. I was like, what? I have A's in all my classes. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm taking seven classes, six of, six, of, six of which I have A's. And they were like, no, no, you withdrew from 13 classes and you failed, you failed English. And that was your completion rate. You dropped to 66. And, and, and if you drop below 67, we just bounce you out of the school. We declare the loans worthless. We make you pay them and all this other shit. And I was like, great. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 3.4 student, but I failed out of school. And they were like, absolutely. Yes, you did. Don't withdraw from classes. And I was like, I didn't know not to withdraw from classes. And they were like, well, you should have talked to your advisor. And I was like, why the fuck would I talk to my advisor about that? If I'm not, if I don't want to take the class, I, I should be able to just withdraw. What? And this kind of savage hypocrisy bullshit permeates workplaces schools the homeless problem all this stupid shit brain dead morons who have stupid ass bureaucratic rules that cause you to fail out of college with perfect days you know what i'm saying and i left college and i didn't go back you know what i'm saying i didn't get my degree i said fuck them you seem like the prison industrial complex in the way that you're stupidly running this now at this point point. and i left the system i was like i can't do the prison industrial system and i can't do the college industrial system either you you're treating me like a head and not 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 a student and and i, I find that disgusting and based and, and the democrats went after them for it kicked them in the nuts and forgave all of the student debt all of it kicked them in the nuts over because they did mistreat us really badly in the end it didn't matter because it didn't cost me anything. The whole thing didn't matter. I didn't really learn much. I didn't already know from just my own intelligence of just learning all the time and all this. And, and what I did, and what I did learn, like, was poisoned by the fact that I bombed out with a 3.4 GPA. I bombed out of college with a 3.4 GPA. I could be, I could, like, Jesus fucking Christ, you could do a Seinfeld skit about this. What? 3.4 and I bomb out on non-completion because I take my mother's advice and I don't magically go to a fucking uh, uh, a class advisor uh, over an issue that I don't know exists. I didn't know it was an issue for completion. Nobody told me this. They didn't say, uh, don't withdraw. It'll affect your completion. Nobody said this. I got the opposite advice from my mother. Withdraw if you're not going to get an A+. Plus. And so I took her advice and I did what she said. And I got perfect days in all my goddamn classes and then bombed out with a 3.4. I failed the, the English, which cost me like a seventh of my... Uh, I was at 3.8 or something like that. I failed English because I wouldn't write the family paper. And I loved that teacher. She was like the best teacher I ever had in my fucking life. She was, she was like the smartest English teacher I'd ever had. And I loved her to death i can't remember her name now though because she dumb fucked up and forced me to write the family paper and i tried to write it i sat down and for for weeks i sat down and tried to write that fucking paper and i was like you know what my identity is that i won't write the paper and so that's what I turned in. I believe I did. I think I did. I turned in. I said, my identity is that I won't write a paper about my family identity because I dislike my family so much. They were so horrible to me, you know? And so, and, and like, and, and, and that's what I handed in. I don't think I wrote the paper. I was just like, I don't, I'm not going to write a paper about this. That's the mission statement, the, th the thesis statement, and the entire paper itself is I cannot write a paper about my fucking family or talk to them. She was like, you have to study. You have to cite sources. You have to quote your family. You have to go to your family. You have to call them. You have to get them to tell them what your, what their life story was, what they were, what it was like for them to grow up in, in, in high school and shit like that. And, and all this stuff. And I was like, I will absolutely not the fuck do that no I'll die first and i did i bombed out of college over it not just that it was a combination of both of it it was withdrawing from i think it was just four four classes i withdrew from four classes over a year and a half and then i got i got a, a d in in english and that was enough the completion rate was well i mean the completion rate was why i bombed out but like my great my at that point their stupid ass bullshit bureaucracy bullshit had affected my gpa so fucking badly that i was like jesus christ it's gonna take a year to recover from it and i was like i all i am is a student trying to attend classes we did not have some special situation here you treated me so goddamn badly that the next day my mother calls me and she's like you need to go back there and i'm like no no i don't if they're going to treat me like this, no, I don't. No, I don't. They are worthless to me. 
And this has happened in my life so many times. From the prison industrial thing, to the college industrial thing, to the fucking student debt industrial thing, to all their fucking jaded corruption and bullshit, the, 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 the corruption and the mistreatment of their own people and all this. And, it, and it's just, I'm so used to it now that I expect it. You know what I'm saying? I expect shit like the Baltimore Bridge. I expect it to happen. Sad state of affairs a focus on quality over quantity meaningful content over sad piece of shit bureaucrats focus. trying to protect some goddamn fucking sally may fucking hood, hood like hood, like hustle you know some fucking uh student loan hustle so they can charge three hundred thousand dollars for a bachelor's degree or some stupid corrupt bullshit right and so they bounce you on completion because because you're the victim of their system or whatever and you think like wow why would the treatment be different anywhere else and so I just wrote it off. I was like, I don't need a degree. I can succeed without it. And I did. Because at the end of the day, the worst thing a gang can do. And is my mother's generation, hard, this is their worst nightmare. When I say that, yeah, that, that, that scam of a hundred thousand dollar bachelor's degree is the worst thing that ever happened to the entire world, much less this country charging a hundred thousand dollars for a fucking bachelor's degree. And I'm quoting dead Prez, by the way, um, you know, really great rap band. Uh, from the from the the Bay Area that talked a lot about politics and stuff, um, you know, like charging hundred thousand dollars for a bachelor's degree is like the worst scam in human history, and it we also had the it was the most damaging thing in human history, and I resented them for it, and I left it I left this the, the college industrial system because of it, and I stopped and I and I, I wrote it off, and and at the end here last year. They forgave sixty-eight thousand dollars in student debt. I didn't pay them a penny. It wasn't worth it. And they forgave that debt because they knew they knew that that what the colleges had done had poisoned the well and turned the entire thing into a fucking toxic hellhole of debt and 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 shit. And the kids were scared to go to college because it's just going to commit them to to having to pay a hundred thousand dollars that they can't read that they can't reach because the jobs that you can get with a degree these days, unless it's in like the software sector or something, are basically like thirty fifty grand something like that, which doesn't even pay for the goddamn. I mean, at that at that, at that rate, you'd have to work for twenty years if you're working for fifty grand a year to pay off a hundred thousand dollar bachelor's degree if you're making 50 grand a year you, you have to work for like 20 25 years something like that that to me is quite literally legal serfdom and the rest of, the, of my generation and the smart millennials and the zoomers and, and the doomers they all they all knew too we all knew that the way you run this world is every bit of fraud and we won't engage in it we won't pay you one red penny for it you can bounce us out of college or bounce us out of school and treat us like we're pariahs and throw us in jail for drugs and all that shit it doesn't make it doesn't make you a better person you're still a shithead it doesn't matter what you do to us you're still a shithead for doing those those things to us you know and it, I, I saw persecution from the government over drugs i saw persecution at my college over fucking completion I, or attend uh, like a, whatever it was attendance or whatever the fuck it was even though i was getting a's i saw all this corrupt bullshit i got out of a murder trial because of my political views in terms of not a murder trial but like a being a a, 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 a fucking jur, a, a high jury in, in a, a capital murder murder case and i use my political views to get out of jury duty that to me is corruption there's all this other crazy corrupt bullshit going on in the background and i don't know man like at the core of it are these oligarch monopolies deciding what the laws are by their money quotients you know Z too and their lobbies or too long too safe or too a lot of systemic problems all leading into each do. other like some kind of octopus you know like the octopus murders the corruption is unacceptable now is bore us and what better way to do that than make a significant part of your experience content that isn't of the utmost quality and you know yeah. i've seen a lot of people under my like it's weird like videos, climbing this hill climbing. right now is like this hill right now this little session of climbing this hill and seeing what i can do with it is more entertaining to me than the entirety of the horizon story across both games so embrace that Embrace that the climbing the mountain is far more interesting. I don't mute climbing the mountain. I do mute the voices. The climbing the mountain is 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 much better. I I I think you need to get better as developers understanding what is fun and what and what isn't. You know, Let's stop doing un, like unfun things. Your business is fun. It's almost unex it's almost inexcusable when you make an unfun video game because the one thing that it, it is required of it is to be fun the entire time. You know, that's the one thing. Otherwise, why make it? You cannot like cut the dope like you did in the in, in in the fucking dope scene you can't you can't cut the video games with dreck and garbage the way you did in the dope scene and get away with it video games have to fundamentally be fun drugs don't 
but 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 video games do drugs don't have to be fun there's no require requirement for them to be fun you know there is a requirement for a video game to be fun at a fundamental level if it's if if, if, if it's if it's even maybe fiscally responsible for it to be in in, in this market of this inflation market where it's ten thousand dollars for for a loaf of bread you know usually only make reviews or discussions on games I like and why I don't do more critiques of things I don't. And do you want yeah, to know the reason like why? Like, I don't critique because the it... things I don't like very much. I mean, I do a lot, actually. But I don't publish stuff. Do I mean, I do publish stuff doing it. But I don't make videos with titles, with a thesis statement attacking whatever it is I'm attacking. I, I tried to do that two times, and it was so against my nature, kind of. It's not against my nature to complain. It's against my nature to be hyperbolic about it and try to, try to like, uh, like, uh, like aggressively attack them i'm not an attack person i had to take those videos down they felt too attacky but i will say it midstream i'll say it midstream while i'm watching the mechanics suck dick you know i shot the canister whatever Ah, I can't flick shot, so I keep missing. It's so annoying. It was a perfect flick shot. It was a, a incredibly bad non uh, non bullet drop shot. You know. Game starts to waste. Fill out games with as much content and things Oops. to do as possible, just to justify a purchase. For every amazing encounter, like the Red Giant of the North, there are five similar bosses. You guys skip the back five minutes, guys, and I'm sorry. My way through to even get there. To me, it's the antithesis of back. what YouTube's games incompetent. should be. And somewhere in the last couple of years and decades, we lost the plot and decided that games need all these filler sections and content for some reason. For as much as something like Call of Duty takes a lot of flack, a lot of the original campaigns for Black Ops, Modern Warfare, and World at War were so amazing because they had none of this annoying half-baked content to get through. Each mission was short, sweet and to the point and because of that it was actually so much more fun and even though that meant the campaigns were really quick it also meant i didn't have to deal with things like this constantly stumbling upon a map where i have no idea what to do next and all of it is trash in fact another game that suffered from this syndrome even more to the extent that it quite literally ruined the entire package is starfield a game with literally hundreds of hours of content to the point where you could play for weeks on end and still not see everything I'm gonna skip it, it forward again. ...of content. And we shouldn't be so hyper-focused on those being the ones we're most hyped about. But what we can yep. do is spend our valuable time only on the titles that make every single hour count. Almost no developers in the world right now can make games over 100 hours long that for the entire runtime are nothing but pure bliss. And if we're being realistic, something like that is probably impossible most of the time. Not everyone can be Larry <laughs> and make Baldur's Gate 3. But what they can make is that same level of quality we see from I games didn't even like think that Gate at a that smaller good. scale it wasn't even 3d really and by the way it that was, goes for some wasn't. massive triple-a studios as well that just haven't figured out how to make quality at that scale yet it's okay for a massive triple-a studio to make a 10-hour game and sell it for seven i'm never gonna play it again i don't think that's perfectly fine and i spent a hundred dollars on the it. content it's worth it if anything, we should be begging how you for know. far shorter, but super high quality Overhyped. experiences that we'll never forget. Five to ten hour games where every single second you have a controller or mouse in your hand is one that has the most amount of effort put into it as possible. We should be demanding quality, not quantity. Because the thing is, as much as people don't want to admit it, often these two things don't really fit together. And you can't just ask for both. And that's due to a little thing called pacing. In my opinion, pacing might just be the most important part of games that barely anyone's talking about. It's the secret formula behind why certain single player games are so much better than others, why specific MMOs garner such a lasting reputation and others die, and why competitive games focus so much on matchmaking algorithms to keep playing. Because at the heart of all games and why we play them is a sense of fun or challenge. If you aren't being challenged and you aren't having fun, there are very few things that will keep you engaged for long. And the 
best way to actually accomplish either of these states is to have a strong and demanding grasp over the pacing of a title. No matter how good a game's narrative and story are, no matter how fun the gameplay around it is, without good pacing, they all fall so flat. For example, one of my favorite games of the past few years, Hi-Fi Rush, is in part so great because of immaculate pacing. Levels are usually fairly short and to the point, enemy variety and music changes constantly early on, and the frequent intermingling of gameplay and high quality animation mixed with lovable and humorous characters makes it so almost every moment in the game is a joy to play. But keep in mind, I said almost every moment. Because there is one mission in Hi-Fi Rush, Track 5 Breaking Out, which almost entirely spoils the fun. In the missions prior, it felt like everything was constantly changing and staying fresh, with fights inside volcanoes trying to deplete a boss's budget to fight, and running across skyscrapers and discovering talking and flying robotic cats with a big smile. But in Track 5, it feels like everything comes to a halt. Suddenly, for over 40 minutes, you must suffer through endless corridor after corridor or trying to ascend a massive superstructure with the same enemies over and over again in the same exact looking arenas. For the first five minutes of this encounter, it is novel and interesting, but quickly this novelty transcends into pure boredom that the game simply didn't have before. And this is mainly due to the fact that the level just has really poor pacing. As opposed to almost every other track in the game, track five really feels like a filler or side quest in an otherwise awesome main ensemble, almost like an opening act for the main band about to play on stage. And it's crazy too because after this the levels become a lot more fun and engaging and especially the final three tracks of this game are nothing but pure bliss and high adrenaline feel good moments that make it all worth it. But it makes us beg the question, why is track 5 even in the game in the first place? 